Hello and welcome. My name is Jewel and I have no idea what I'm doing. RuneScape is a very interesting game. There are tons of different ways to approach playing this game and they all come with their own restrictions or gameplay changes. Now, the last time I played this game was back in 2007 when I was in middle school. And let me tell you, I had no clue what was happening. I remember completing some quests and fishing lobsters. Then I stopped playing the game. It wasn't until this year, 2022, that I decided to pick it back up. And you may be asking why I decided to do that. And that's because of all the incredibly talented content creators for this game. They all have such unique and fun ideas ranging from by release to the Gilinor games. So it got me thinking that I kind of want to try and play this game again to give it another shot. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I don't exactly know what this video will end up being, but for my account I do have a goal in mind, but you'll just have to keep watching to find out what exactly that will be. Here are my current stats. As you can see, there's pretty much nothing here. Don't worry about the members only uh, skills. I will be getting a bond from one of my friends who is a runescape expert, I'll be mentioning him later in the video, but I will have access to all of the paid skills in this game. So with all of that being said, let's get started. So we're going to start with a very classic quest. Everyone knows it. Everyone loves it. That's right. It's Cook's Assistant. Alright, let's go ahead and talk to the chef right over here. See what we can do for him. What's wrong, chef? Oh, it's the Duke's birthday and you don't have a cake prepared? Kind of seems like a you problem, honestly. I guess we'll help you out. I may not know a lot about this game, but I think I can manage to get these ingredients in before I just make an absolute fool of myself not knowing where the fuck any of this shit is. I'm gonna grab this knife and also this pot over here because I think you need to put flour in a pot and let's get going. We're gonna go pick up an egg. Egg. Activate the lever. Now we need to find a bucket. When I find this bucket, you'll be the first to know. Two coins. The thing. Three coins. Let's go. Buy one. All right, cow. Give it to me. Fuck, I didn't know there was a difference. I see it. I found it. Open this gate. Give me your milk. Perfect. And here it is, the moment we've all been waiting for. Here's a bucket of milk. Here's a pot of flour. Here's a fresh egg. Do I get to go? Man, fuck you. And there it is, one quest point on my way to a quest cape. <gasps> Hell yeah, making big fucking moves, I'm looking good. I'm ready to take on the world. This goblin's beating my ass. Come on, come on, hit him, hit him. Come on, you can do this. Yeah, dude. Oh, this goblin's kicking my ass. I don't have any food. Help. Please. Yes. Yes. Bronze square shield. Well, don't mind if I do. Oh, yeah. I know what time it is. It's time for fishing. So, yeah. I decided to get some skilling done. Fishing, mining, agility, that type of stuff. And it's crazy how nostalgic it all felt. Even though I haven't played this game for a very, very long time, I still couldn't help but feel that just like pang of nostalgia kind of run through me as I was fishing next to the fishing tutor or going to that old ass uh, smelter in Lumbridge. It's just, I don't know, there's something about it 
I'm sure other old school RuneScape players can attest to that, but I don't know. It was, a, it was a interesting experience for sure. All right, so with some levels under my belt, I decided that it was time to get some quests done. Now I mentioned before that I have an expert on RuneScape helping me along the way, and he told me I should probably get a few things done right away to help out the account. First things first, the Stronghold of Security to get some money. Second, Waterfall Quest to bypass a lot of the early uh, combat training stats. Third, Druidic Ritual in order to unlock Herb Lore. Four, Rune Mysteries. And finally, the Knight Sword. So, let's go ahead and start doing all that stuff. I may or may not have forgot to bring food. We'll see if that becomes an issue later. I'm sure it'll be fine. I didn't realize you actually needed to enable the two-factor authentication to get the reward. So I did that. All right, I've taken some hits, but I've got six HP. I should be fine. You hit me for a five, are you kidding? I'm gonna die. And with that, we have 10,000 coins and a nice pair of boots. We mark that off the list. Stronghold security, done. Next up, waterfall quest. All right, so I got myself a games necklace so I can teleport to the barbarian outpost, which is near the start of waterfall quest. I then talk to Almira, who seems to have a problem that we are going to take care of. Uh, I'm going to talk to this little kid over here. He mentioned something about a treasure, but we're going to take that for ourselves, so. Sucks to be him. Uh, and yes, I am absolutely going to be using Quest Helper for these quests, because if I didn't, they would take easily 10 times longer than they would normally, so just to speed things up for myself, I'm going to be using it, so just keep that in mind. Uh, next, I have to find some book that talks about Galerial, I think. Next up, we have to save Golri from the jail beneath the Trinum Village Maze. So we make our way in there. We're going to grab a key, pass all these different hobgoblins, take a few hits. It's not a big deal. gonna set him free and then he's gonna give us some sort of pebble don't know why he has it didn't read that much into it got the pebble now it's on to the actual dangerous part of this quest my friend told me that the best way to go about this is to first walk and hit a zombie i ignored him i decided to run i got kind of lucky but the idea is to walk and hit a zombie that way the giant's uh, aren't able to aggro you and absolutely fucking destroy me. So, we we're able to get that done. Now, with the amulet and the urn acquired, it was time to finish up this quest. First things first, I had to run past all these mages to get the key. Dang. 
then run past all these fire giants who luckily just decided to ignore me today. Not going to complain about it. I then placed all of the runes in their respective places. Then after all of that was said and done, I very carefully made sure that I did the right thing regarding the amulet and the urn. And that is quest complete. For the next three quests, I decided to just show the completion of the quests and a little bit of the actual quest itself. Uh, because let's be honest, they're not quite as interesting as Waterfall Quest is. There's very little danger for me in these quests to die, so I just decided to show the completion. But with that being said, I did complete all of them as you can see on the screen. Now I have access to Herb Lore, uh, Mining Rune Essence, and I got a whole bunch of Smithing XP, so I would call all of this Mission Accomplished. After completing Waterfall Quest, I wanted to get some more levels taken care of, and I was talking to my friend, and he had mentioned that the fire giants that I ran past in that quest were a decent way to train some magic, and they also have some decent drops. So, with an inventory of some food and a whole lot of runes, I headed back over there and I got to work. Uh, he told me to stay in this door frame, or else I would get slammed down big style by those giants, and I didn't really want that, so I was able to safe spot them right here. And my goal was to get to 50 magic, that way I can unlock some decent teleports. Oh, that that's way easier than it. That, that's way easier than I thought it would be. Okay, well, uh, just, I don't know, st steal some cakes, get, get a bunch, get your thieving up. They're pretty good food. Uh, yeah. Now that I have that dumb bit out of my system, I want to train some range. And to do that, I really want to get the Dorgishin crossbow. But there's a few things that I need to do before I can wield that. First of all, I need to get to 28 range, and I also need to complete the Lost Tribe quest. I decided to get the 28 range first, and I did that by killing some giant frogs in the Lumbridge Swamp with the new cakes that I have as food. Perfect, now I just need to complete the Lost Tribe. That was easy. It's time to go back to my home in RuneScape, fishing. I think fishing is great because it's a double whammy of experience because you get to fish and you also get to cook. I know that there are other skills that do that like fire making and wood cutting, but I don't know, I just, I prefer to just hang out, catch some fish, cook them up, it's nice. Using the newly acquired Dorgishin crossbow, as well as some of the fish that I had cooked up previously, I made my way over to the Chaos Druids to start on my Herb Lore grind to pick up any of these small leaves that these guys drop for me. So I'll just be here for a bit, just hanging out, shooting guys. No big deal. All right, after spending some time at the Chaos Druids, these are all of the herbs and whatnot that I picked up, so it's time to get to work and see the fruits of my labor. Yeah, that's satisfying. Oh, that's that's only six herb lore. 
know what? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something else for a bit. That that was a bit disappointing. So I didn't have a goal for a little while, and then my friend messaged me saying that the holiday event was a pretty good way to make some gold. So I headed past the barbarian village, talked to the Santa Claus, and then I decided to enter this holiday tournament. There's a whole lot of dialogue here. I have to say, I really enjoy, uh, from what I have read of the quest dialogue, I really enjoy how some of them are written. I think it's very fun, very tongue-in-cheek. And I think it's a really nice addition to have in a game like this. So I talked to everybody in this line, and I think it was finally time to start the first event. For this first game, I just needed to put a bunch of coal onto a bunch of people, literally bury them in coal so that they cannot move. Now this next one, I believe I had to get as much gingerbread as possible and just shove it down this like conveyor belt thing. And the last one is very uh, self-explanatory. It's a snowball fight where I am fairly certain that they are giving the yellow snow to throw at people, which, as you probably know, is pee. And that's... That's gross. That's fucking... That's nasty. So... Sh shame on you. Alright, here it is, the final showdown just between me and Gus, this guy that I helped sneak in here because he wants to drink a lot or something. No, Gus, I'm not going to take a dive for you. I'm going to beat your ass, and I'm going to be the one that wins. In the spirit of Christmas, fuck you. And just like that, we are the champions. Sorry, Gus. Better luck next time. He's talking to you guys. He's talking to everybody that watched my last video. Now that we've got this reward from Gus, I think these are all the things that I can sell on the GE, all these noted items, which is cool. But first we gotta we gotta try some of this shit on. We gotta see what we look like. Okay. A little snow outfit. I'm looking pretty good, not gonna lie. Okay. Uh, like a naughty and nice capeless. That's kind of cool. Actually, I kind of like this outfit. I'm not going to lie. This thing's kind of sick.
All right, now that I am all decked out in the holiday garb, it is time for the true spirit of these holidays, and that is to make some fucking money, some fat stacks of cash. You know what I'm talking about. I put everything tradable up onto the GE, except for one of the party hats, which I decided to keep for myself, and uh, we'll see how they sell. I'll kind of keep you updated in the next video to see how much money it was able to get me. I decided that I wanted to get some questing done, so I did my best buy release impression and got to work. Uh, just like with a lot of the other quests, I'm only going to show maybe parts of the quests or maybe just the completion goal, just because they're not super interesting they're very easy uh, so if I think things are more interesting or funny then I'll put them in the video but for now it'll just be this completion scroll for the most part I want to take just a second to highlight this little exchange between Doric and myself. I just think it's super funny that the game devs understand that people either have done this quest a billion times so that they have the knowledge or that they're just using some sort of plugin. I just think it's very cute and very clever. I think it's small details like this that really give RuneScape a human touch. It might be weird to say that, but to break the fourth wall in a game like this is not something that you typically expect. And it reminds you that you're playing a game and you're trying to have fun. And so are the devs. I think that's great. All right, everyone, it's time to take down Count Dracula. I mean, Count Draenor. These townspeople have a vampire problem, and I just so happen to have a penchant for killing such things, so it seems to work out pretty well. Anyway, I had fun with this quest, mainly because I like Draenor Manor as a zone. In this quest, basically, I just need to gather these materials, beat this dude's ass, so we'll see how that fight goes. Just look at this little goofy chair. How can you not love this? Look at him. Just follow me around. I was watching a video a little while ago that mentioned that the devs might have put that chair in as like a taunt to players because you can't sit down. So that's pretty funny if that's the case. Anyway, here's uh, Count Not Dracula. And uh, yeah, we'll just kind of, kind of beat his ass. Alright, that was pretty easy. I think I might be a little overleveled for this, but now I just gotta stab him in the heart with this stick, and we are good to go. I want to get into Mauritania to level up my Swampletic Stream, so in order to do that, I need to complete the quest Priest in Peril first. Uh, so first we need to talk to a monk that tells us to kill this guard dog. Uh, and being that our character has zero sense of when someone is trying to fuck with us, uh, we do it with no questions asked. Look at me trying to prayer flick like I know what I'm doing. 
I don't know what the fuck's happening. I'm just clicking when I think my guy's about to swing. Just a few more hits and the Temple Guardian is going down. Alrighty. As it turns out, that guard dog was actually good and we may have fucked up. Uh, now we gotta try and make it better. Uh, and to do that, we're gonna free this guy named Drezzle. The quest helper mentioned that I would need a bunch of essence that is unnoted. It didn't mention when I would need that, so I just held on to it for the entirety of the quest. And yeah, it was kind of a pain in the ass to drop, drop the essence, pick it back up, juggle it around. Yeah, it was, it was a nightmare. So yeah, fuck me. So we get this key after killing one of the monks, and apparently it's not the right key. So we have to go swap a, swap out the key for the, the right one, which is down in the mausoleum. I mean, we get it first try, so that's pretty cool. After getting the key, we fill up this bucket with water. That way, I think Mr. Drezzleman can splish splash it on a coffin or something like that. I'm pretty sure he needs to bless it. I don't know how religion works. I, I'm just the messenger. Yeah, he says bless you to the water, and then I pour it on this coffin to clean it off, and we're good to go. And finally, it is time for me to use this rune essence that I have been carrying with me for the entirety of this quest. I don't know exactly how long I had it on me, but it was a long ass time. And I'm going to be very happy to finally get this shit out of my inventory. It's brutal. Nice. I get a prayer level, which is good. And I also get the Wolf's Bane Dagger, which I think is really cool. So, honestly, just a win-win. So I lied to every single one of you. There is no way that I'm going to live out my Swampletics dream here in Mauritania. I just wanted to get to the Cannabis Rooftop Agility Course, and I'm sure a lot of you understand why. Uh, but for those of you that don't, apparently this place is really good for getting Marks of Grace. So I'm going to be spending a lot of time here because I would eventually like to get the full Graceful set. I also wanted to get to 50 agility, that way I have a little bit more run energy and run energy recharge because I was tired of just walking around everywhere. Uh, as you can see, I have been here for quite a long time and I've already got enough tokens to buy the graceful pants, uh, but I'm bad at what I do and I didn't record that. So we're gonna, we're, we're gonna watch me buy the graceful top together and it's gonna be just the same thing okay cool and that my friends is 50 agility I did it, you guys. I did the content creator thing where I'm, I, I, I say the level every single time. Can I get a hell yeah? And here we are inside of the thieves' den. I mean the rogue's den, not thieves. Uh, so that I can get the graceful set. I think this set looks super cool. I'm sure a lot of people agree with me. 
Uh, and I know that it's super useful for like skilling and stuff like that, just getting from point A to point B. And it looks like with these two pieces, I weigh negative amount. That's pretty cool. I want that. I want that workout routine. I want that diet. I wanted to find a good training method for all of my melee stats, and I had been hearing from various videos that I watched about a thing called experiments, and apparently they're a great way of doing that. So I looked up how to access the experiment cave, and I just kind of sat down here for a few hours trying to get 40 in all of my melee stats. You may be asking, Duel, why are you blowing glass? I want to get this. I want to get this because I want to get 50 range. But I am not going to pick up every single arrow and bolt that I fire, and with this, it will help me do that. In order to get this, I need to complete Animal Magnetism, which is the longest quest that we have done on this series so far. These are the required levels for Animal Magnetism. As you can see, I have the 30 range and 35 woodcutting, uh, but I need to take care of the crafting and slayer levels, so that's what I'm doing right now. I don't quite understand Slayer as a skill just yet, but I know that it's a lot of people's favorites, so I'm hoping that eventually I will grow to appreciate it a little bit more. Uh, but right now it just kind of seems like get task, go kill, repeat type thing. To begin this quest, we start by talking to Ava or Ava, however you pronounce it, and... Wait a minute, you can't just say hello and welcome. That's what I said just like a minute ago. You can't steal my shit. Regardless, we talk to her and she immediately knows that we are dumb as rocks and will do whatever is asked of us to complete this quest. Uh, I love the dialogue saying that heroes don't ever sleep or we don't have bodily functions. Just a nice little detail to add. Uh, so Ava needs some undead chickens for her bed, I guess? I don't know, I'm not really going to question it, but we are off to Mauritania to get those chickens. So I'll be honest, this part of the quest? Kind of fucking boring. Instead of making you watch me run back and forth between Malcolm and Alice, who are literally 35 feet away from each other, I'm going to do a little bit of a uh, reenactment to let you know kind of what's going on with these two. I'm dead and I miss my wife. Can you tell that for me? Uh, sure. D am I still able to buy some chickens from you? Maybe after you tell my wife. Okay. Hey, Alice, I, uh, Malcolm says that he still loves you, by the way. Tell him that I still love him too, but I can't find any money that he saved. Same with that prized cow. Alright, fine, fuck. Hey, Malcolm, your wife loves you and she needs the money that you saved or something like that? And something about a cow, I, I don't fucking know. I put all that money in the bank. Alice, he, he said that he put all of the money in the bank bank so just as long as you know the pin you're good to go i don't i don't know the pin uh what why don't why don't you just take this ghost speak amulet and then you can go talk to him yourself i i'm afraid fuck fine i'll see if i can get the pin from him i ain't telling you my pin i don't trust you none Malcolm, come on. I've been talking to you and your wife back and forth for like an hour. Just... Ugh. Alice, he says he won't give me the pin. Are you sure you don't want to talk to him? I can just give you this necklace. You know what? How about a better... I have a better idea. How about I go fashion you a go speak amulet that he can wear so he can talk to you rather than you talk to him? Wow, that sounds like a great idea. I'll be back. So that's exactly what we do. We go talk to this old crone. She's able to fashion us a ghost speak amulet that he can wear. I don't really know how that solves the issue of her being afraid of ghosts and zombies and shit, but I'm, I'm not going to ask questions. Uh, we take it back to her and oh damn look at me moonwalk all right i'm pretty smooth
We give Malcolm the medallion. He seems pretty happy with what's going on. And then we get to watch a pretty sick cutscene. Look at this guy running around just trying to catch his chicken. He ain't slick, he ain't fast. Fucking cool, look at him. He's all in his rune gear, I think? And I recognize that helm, I just can't remember what it's called. Oh shit, he fucked up that cow. That's fucking incredible. After Cow Elite Killer uh, absolutely decimates Betsy and helps uh, Malcolm catch this chicken, we're finally able to buy these chickens from Malcolm. Good day, good day. So after all of that and said and done, apparently we need to get some Ecto tokens because Malcolm is too much of a cheap bastard to just let me have these stupid undead chickens. Even after I helped him talk to his wife, I guess he still needs this payment. Piece of shit. Uh, this took me a little while because I've never really seen this whole process be done, uh, getting the Ecto tokens and whatnot, but after a little bit of trial and error, I was successfully able to get 20 Ecto tokens, and that's enough to buy not one, but two chickens of the undead variety. Uh, with the chickens in hand, it was time to head back to Ava. This is what the undead chickens look like in my inventory? I mean, I can't say that I knew what I was expecting, but it wasn't... It wasn't that. Those look awful. I really do enjoy taking this game slowly. It's kind of just like a steady pace of progress. I know that in the future it's going to slow down a lot, but for right now I think it's going at a good pace. Apparently, Ava needs these undead chickens for her bed so that she can use the feathers from an undead chicken. She claims that it's cleaner, but I don't fucking buy it. That's gross. After delivering the birds to Ava, we rightfully ask about our reward, and she tells us to fuck off and get her a magnet. I have no idea how an undead chicken and a magnet are going to go together for our reward, but at this point, I'm just along for the ride, so fuck it. I'll get a magnet. We gather the five bars. We take it to this witch. She turns it into a magnet that is not magnetized yet. So that's our job next. We need to go to a mine or a quarry uh, and look north and then strike it with a hammer. How the fuck in God's name is someone ever supposed to figure that out without a quest helper? <laughs> I'm sure it tells you somewhere in the, like, quest dialogue but damn that's that's some fucked up shit i also don't think that this is the most scientifically accurate uh quest but who knows i'm just some dude that's posting videos on youtube i i don't know shit honestly all right so we smack this metal with the uh hammer and voila we have a magnet apparently now it's time to return to ava in desperate hopes that we can get our reward soon nope we need some magic wood from the Draenor Manor grounds, but our little baby axe won't cut for shit. So we have to go talk to this Slayer trainer, get a Mithril axe blessed up, and then we've got an axe that can really do some damage to these trees. That's it, specifically just to these trees, nothing else. Hell yeah. 
Now with this twig finally acquired, it was time to get my reward. Being the actual super genius that we are, Ava decides that she needs us to look over her research notes because she can't quite make sense of them. Don't worry, I got this. And with no help at all from the Runelite plugin, not at all, don't worry about that, I was able to solve it in record time. Pure luck? Uh, ah, man, fuck you. So the last thing Ava needs us to do is to get some buttons for whatever container she's about to give us. Now, like I said previously, because I suck at what I do, I don't have footage of me getting the buttons and polishing them. But just to let you know, it did happen because we're about to finish the quest. Hey, look at that. We got the Avas, which is great, but I did not realize... Uh, that in order to actually get the Ava's Accumulator, which is the one that I read about, you need to get 50 range. So, I have a slightly less powerful version of it, but do not worry, once I do get the 50 range, I will be coming back to get the actual Ava's Accumulator. This one's just going to be a bit of a placeholder for now. And here we are utilizing the fruits of my labors at Rock Crabs. Uh, just for other people that may not know, you can fucking die here. I didn't know this until I went AFK for about five minutes, and then I came back to my ass at Lumbridge Castle. So, yeah, be careful out there, kiddos. Ah, uh, the beach, crashing waves, warm sand, and these giant monstrosities to train my ranged combat skill on. What a perfect place. Hello and welcome back everyone. In the last episode we took on animal magnetism in order to get the Ava's accumulator to help me train my range. We also completed a lot of quests from 2001. Actually all of them except for one to be exact. There is just one more quest left to take care of. In this episode we're going to take something on that middle school me couldn't dream of doing. Something so daring that it took me many years of not playing this game to prepare for. That's right. Today, we kill a dragon. More specifically, today we take on Dragon Slayer 1. Let's get started. begin our journey by talking to the guildmaster at the Champions Guild in Varrock. He seems happy enough to give us a quest simply because we asked for one, and since he gives us this quest with no hesitation at all, I'm sure it's going to be a walk in the park. He tells us that we need to speak to a man named Oziak, uh, as Oziak is the one that can provide us with some rune plate bodies for us to wear, which is pretty cool. The guildmaster does warn us that Oziak is a little weird little off, but I'm sure it's nothing. It's probably going to be fine. So as it turns out, Oziak is a real dickhead, and he won't give us any plate bodies unless we prove ourselves to be a hero. And what he asks us to do? Oh, you know, just kill the legendary dragon of Crandor. No big deal. Being that we are still dumb as hell, and we think killing a dragon is going to be fun, and I mean, to be honest, I kind of agree, we're going to do it. We're going to try and kill this dragon. Uh, Oziak tells us to get lost and kill this thing before he will give us any sort of plate bodies. And he will also not offer us any assistance in this matter. Fucking piece of shit. Man, forget you. I don't need your help. I got this. This is going to be easy. No big deal. So we head back to the Guildmaster because he is much more helpful than that fucker was, and he gives us the mother load of all information. This whole section is pretty dialogue heavy, so I'm just going to summarize what the Guildmaster tells us. That dragon is real bad news. Someone woke her up and she got real pissed and killed him. Plus the whole city of Crandor. 
The only ones to live were some wizards named Thalazar, Lozar, and Melzar. You're going to need a ship of old Crandorian make, an anti-dragon shield, and a map to get to her island. These map pieces are here. Bam, bam, and bam. With all this information, oh, that's the wrong accent. With all the information in the world, it's time to get to work and find all of this stuff that we need. Of the materials that we need, I already have a lobster pot, so that's taken care of. I first made my way to Falador with the intent to buy a wizard's mind bomb there. Uh, and I vastly overestimated the price of this drink. I brought like 300 gold with me and it was like three. So, mind bomb acquired. Psst, hey, hey, I heard you need some silk. I know just the spot to score big on that. Man, shut the fuck up. Last time I listened to you, we did this whole heist bit just for some fucking cakes. It was super easy. You made such a big deal out of it. And I just walked up there and I stole stuff. It was fine. I'm sorry. I just, I just wanted to help. It's fine. Just, it's fine. After getting the silk, I needed to get an unfired bowl. So in order to make that, yes, I am trying to make stuff rather than buy it. I need clay and a bucket of water. So I head down to the mine beneath Falador and I gather some clay and with one, Quack. I have the clay. Now I just need to get the water to mix it. And we've got ourselves some workable soft clay. In order to make a bowl, I need to find a pottery wheel. And as far as I could tell, this is the closest one to me currently at the Barbarian Outpost. I'm sure they won't mind letting me borrow their stuff. I mean, we go way back, like to the stronghold of security days, way back. They're cool with me. We're cool. With all four items, it was time to finally meet the Oracle on top of Ice Mountain. Jesus Christ, girl, aren't you fucking cold? You got no jacket, it's literally snowing all over the place. On top of that, this place is called fucking Ice Mountain. Ugh. Regardless, we talk to her and she gives us a riddle, which I think is very fun, honestly. As an adult, I probably could have figured this out without a quest helper or at least i'd like to think i could have but young me would have no shot at this i don't even think i knew what crafting was back then so forget trying to make an unfired bowl she tells us to take all of those uh items and open a magic door in the dwarven mines that we were just in so that's where we head to Yeah, I'm pretty sure I was just down here, and honestly, I didn't notice this door or room at all. That's kind of crazy. We put all four items into this magic door. Not really sure how shoving a lobster pot and a clay bowl into some key slots will help, but it's magic. I'm not really going to question it. And somehow it all works and we get our very first piece of the map. Something, something, Dragon of Crandor, beloved, just give me the, just give me the piece of the map. I, I just want the map piece. Thanks. It says we need to go to Port Serum, so I home telly out to get prepared. Man, this really does take a minute. No wonder I pull out a book to start reading. The quest helper mentions that there are two ways to go about getting this next piece. We can either pay 10,000 gold or kill the person holding it and telegraph it. Now, I'd like to think myself a peaceful person uh, oh, uh, you're asking why I'm putting my range gear on? Uh, uh, no, no reason. I just, I just like to be prepared. Oh, you also noticed that I have runes for a telegrab. Well, you know, you never know when you're going to need to help uh, get something off a tall shelf for an old lady, right? Oh no, I slipped and killed him. Well, I guess it's a good thing I brought this telegrab. Shut up, you know you did the same fucking thing. I really do wonder, though, who chose to pay the 10,000 gold. 
Those people deserve like a medal or something. The last piece of the map is in some sort of maze north of Remington. So when I'm in here, I gotta kill an enemy so that it drops a key that I need to use on the right door so I can progress farther to do the same thing like three or four times. Once again, fuck this without a quest helper. I would have never been able to do this as a kid. It would have taken me forever to do this uh, if I didn't have something helping me along the way. This guy is fucking nutso. By the way, your pet rock is gonna fucking starve now. Sorry. Here's the epic showdown between me and this big ass, or I guess it's a lesser demon. Man, I thought this would be cooler. Uh, anyway, we beat him, get the last piece of the map, and we are one step closer to completing our journey. Anti-Dragon Shield has been acquired. It seems like literally no one has faith in me to complete this quest. Not that I can really blame them, but I mean, I, I can do this, right? Right? I've got the nails, the money, and the hammer. I just need the planks. Now I need to go talk to someone named Clarence to buy some rickety ass boat that is apparently the make and model of this old Crandorian vessel that I need. So here we go. And with just a few nails, some planks and a hammer, she's seaworthy. We also smash all these pieces of the map together to make one big map, and then we have to find someone crazy enough to join me on this suicide mission. Ned. Ned, come here, Ned. I need your help. No, I don't need any rope. I need you to take me to Crandor. Oh, this man is ready to die on this mission. I suppose that bodes well for me. All right, everyone, it is finally time. We are off to Crandor to fight the legendary Elvarg. As I was recording this, I couldn't help but think about the name Elvarg and how close it is to the word gravel backwards. I mean, just literally move one letter over and it's right there. That thought was truly in my mind the entire quest. So there's a little sneak peek into what my mind is like sometimes. This is the second video in a row where we get to watch a cutscene. I bet watching this as a kid would have been crazy. You spend so long building up to this, and then you just get sideswiped by the very thing that you're here to kill. It must have been such a cool feeling. Oh my god, Jenkins gets absolutely fucked. 10 HP, that's all you got, my guy? Why are you here in the first place? You knew where we were going. Damn. Don't ask about the hammer or the key. I forgot to deposit them in my bank.
Here we go. It's time to kill Elvar. Holy shit, you hit me for a nine? That sucks. Oh my god, she attacks so fast. What the hell? I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit nervous. I don't really want to run all the way back here. That seems like a pain in the ass. Ooh, that's another big hit. That's rough. Oh, that was a big hit. I suppose this is a good time to talk about this as well. For these longer fights, I want to throw the question to you guys. Should I keep it all in? Should I fast forward it? Should I cut out just most of the fight to have just the last little bit in? I don't really know how to tackle this type of thing. So if you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them. I think we got this though. We have 18 HP to go. Still tons of food in the bank. Yeah, I, th I think we're solid. I think we're good. Just one more hit. And yeah, there we go. Perfect. Elvar down. Oh shit. I'm going to rip off her head. That's brutal. That's crazy. Let's go. Oh, hello there. This looks like the fight caves, I think. Well, I'm not quite ready to take these on just yet, so I'll be seeing you later, I suppose. Now, with the head of a dragon and a stack of cash, it was time to claim my reward. That's right, Oziak. I fucking did it. No thanks to your sorry ass. Alright, everybody. That right there is Dragon Slayer 1 completed. Alright, cool. Let's see how much this plate body goes for on the GE. Alright, not bad. And now let's see how much Oziak wants me to pay for it. Oh, over double the price. No, that's not happening. Sorry, Oziak. Gonna go somewhere else to get that. This is a good time to talk about this. For my account, I would generally like to avoid the Grand Exchange as much as I can. But I didn't make myself an Iron Man for a reason just like this. I'd rather not pay double for a rune plate body when I could just go to the Grand Exchange and get it for half the price. So... You can consider me an Iron Man in spirit, but not in conviction, if that makes sense. But first, just take a look at me. I look like shit. Blue hat, some bright ass pink robes. No, 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 no. This is not going to fly at all. I want to get a decent set of mage gear, and the only one that seems to be obtainable for me right now is the Zorakian set dropped from Lizardman. I hope I'm saying that right. After learning the hard way that these guys are poisonous, I brought some anti-poison and took advantage of the horrors of war to kill these lizards while they were attacking the Shazian soldiers here. I need to get 12 pieces of Zorakian fabric to make the set. This was my first time going far west in RuneScape, so I thought it was kind of cool to just see what the newer locations, at least newer to me, locations looked like. Uh, it was a, a cool experience. I liked it. And after not too long, I had exactly what I needed. All that was left to do was to get some yarn, a needle, and then we got ourselves a hat. 
perfect. Now I just need to make some pants. Oh, wait, fuck, shit, god damn it, you stupid piece of shit, me, son of a bitch. Alright, hold on, I can fix this, I think I can fix this, I'm sure they got this stuff on the GE. Alright, cool, no, cool, I can buy it, cool. Uh, people just gotta, I gotta hurry before people notice. Uh, come on, come on, come on, just let me buy this stuff, shit, come on, I just wanna buy some fabric, come on. I'll literally just pay you double, I don't care, the people need to see this happen. All right, cool. I finally got the replacement. And just like that, with no issues whatsoever, I have myself some Zorakian mage gear. Hell yeah. Oh, I also crafted an amulet of magic, but like I've said before, I suck at what I do and I forgot to record it because I'm trash. So yeah, I've also got that. All right, everybody, here is the method. I'm going to be killing about a hundred or so red dragons in order to get their bones. Some of you may be asking, why not go for blue dragons? They have less HP. You can still safe spot them. Well, that's because I'm greedy and I want to get something called a grubby key. So I'm kind of killing two birds with one stone here. We did eventually get a key, uh, but I still need to get to 57 thieving in order to crack open this door. So that'll be another project in the future. So it's just other stuff to work towards, which I think is good. This just about wraps up the kills. I think you've got like 99 or so bones. According to Runelight, I should only need about 85 to 90 to get 44 prayer. So we should be good to go. Here we are. You all knew it was coming. This is the special place that my friend told me about. Inside the wilderness, it can give you a ton of extra experience. That's right, it's time for the Chaos Altar. Now, I didn't know this at the time of recording, but apparently you can lose pieces of Graceful out there, and that's fucked up. I would have never worn my Graceful out there if I knew that was the case, but, you know. I just thought they were a different kind of item, since you don't buy them with regular GP, but, uh, yeah. I told him that I did these runs in my Graceful, and he just about had a heart attack, so, you know, oops. Anyway, I'm sure it'll be fine and nothing bad will happen. During these runs, I was very careful to have my cursor over the logout screen as much as I could, just in case somebody was out there looking to take my precious bones. And lo and behold, on my first trip, I'm getting fucking killed. Great. Oh, wait. No, there's my hero. Let's go, dude. This guy saved my ass so hard. That's insane. Well, you know what they say. There's always bigger fish out there. At the end of the first trip, I was at a solid 35 prayer, so with the luck of God on my side, I ran back to Edgeville, restocked on bones, and came back. But you know what I realized? I've been a very big idiot. I came out here with zero protection. But worry not, everyone. I've got a few cards up my sleeve. Man, fuck you guys. That was funny. Anyway, here's a flashback of me getting these cards from Diago and Draenor Village. With my grandfather's deck in hand. Man, that sounds fucking bad. Whatever, with Gramps' dick in my hand, I made my final trip to the Chaos Altar. But, Runelight fucking lied to me, and apparently I didn't have enough dragon bones to get 44 prayer. So, I had to resort to murder. That's right, I killed innocent people for their bones, just to sacrifice them here at this altar to increase my own power. Someone please call the authorities. Call Mr. Jagex, please, I must be stopped. But hey, that's 44 prayer and that's pretty cool. Also, I don't know what killed this guy, but it scared the shit out of me, so I logged out and hopped worlds just to be safe. Oh no, please, sir, have mercy. I'm too weak, I can't fight. 
I wanted to put this part in the video because I thought it was really funny just getting cards thrown at me in the wilderness. It scared the shit out of me at first, but then I realized he's just, you know, fucking around like I was just a second ago. So it's a good time. After getting 44 prayer, there was another task set before me, but I'm not going to tell you what that is because I think it'll be a fun little game if you can guess to see what I'm working towards. For this next goal, I need to complete a few quests, one of them being Tree Gnome Village. So, using my Ring of Dueling, I teleport over to Castle Wars and start it up. The king tells me he needs some help because they're getting shit on by the troops of Khazard? Ka Khazard? I'm not sure. Uh, they're getting shit on by those guys. So he needs me to help bolster their defenses. So with these six logs, that's right, count them six, I'm going to bolster these defenses like no other. We also need to find some coordinates to fire a ballista, which we need to talk to three separate gnomes. One is behind this castle. Uh, one who is in jail right over here. And the other who has seen the horrors of war too much and his mind is finally snapped. Damn, that's sad as fuck. Anyway, with the luck of blue highlighted text, I aim and fire the ballista. We retrieve the orb from on top of the stronghold and return to the king. He says that we're still fucked and we need to kill the warlord who has the other two orbs of protection. As requested, there is going to be live commentary of me killing the Warlord, so we'll see how that goes. Alrighty guys, uh, so I got some tuna on me and I'm going to try and beat this dude's ass. We're going to see how it goes. No, I'm coming for the orbs. You're going to drop them for me. I am probably going to I'm probably going to beat your ass, but we'll find out. Oh, I didn't recharge my prayer. I probably should have done that first. Oh, well, I'm, it'll be fine. Uh, let me go ahead and let me change my attack style. Maybe that'll help. I don't know really what that does, but we'll see. Ooh, that's a good hit. Nice. Oh, shit, I can hit 11s. Let's go. Let's spin the camera a little bit. Woo. Ooh, another 11. Fuck yeah. Yeah, this dude, uh, this dude sucks. He can't hit me for shit. Oh, well, hit me for a five. That's not too bad. Battle of the Ages. I also brought this rune sword. It was probably a mistake. I think the rune scimitar that I have is just better, but I wanted to try something different. So we're giving it a shot. It seems to be kind of putting in work, so it's not too bad. Ooh, another 10. Ooh, fuck yeah. Okay, he's starting to hit me, but yeah, he's he's getting kind of fucked up. It's like three tens. That's really good. Let me zoom in here. Try and get some better angles to see. Make it cinematic if possible. Nice. Yeah, so you'll have to let me know if you guys prefer this live commentary or if you want something different. I'm, I'm open to uh, suggestions for this type of stuff, at least. I don't think I need to eat food yet. I'm, I'm probably fine. He hasn't hit me for anything higher than like a six, so I'm, I'm chilling. Actually, uh, let's eat one just to be safe. Oh, well, speak of the devil, he hit a seven. Back to back sevens, fuck. Eat a tuna. Eat two. All right, cool. 
a not. Oh my god, this guy's coming out fucking swinging at the end here. Hit him. Take him down. Hit him for a fat. Oh, yeah, there we go. Alright, take these orbs. You know what? Just for good measure. I want to bury your bones right where you died. Beautiful. After killing the warlord, we grab the orbs and then we head back to the king. I give the orbs back to the king. They do some weird little ritual where they chant. Not really going to talk about it. And then the quest is complete. With this quest completed, we're able to access the teleportation through spirit trees, which is super helpful. And we also get a nice little necklace as well. We begin this sidetrack by talking to Charlie the Tramp in the city of Varrock. They want us to get a specific kind of fish. Well, lucky for me, I have a bunch of cooked herring in my bank, so I'm going to assume that cooked herring is what this houseless person would want, right? A cooked fish so that they have something to eat? Oh, they want a raw herring. But why? Ugh, whatever. I make my way to the only spot I can remember to get the fish and catch it real fast, head back to Charlie, and then we get our next step of this clue. I need to go chat up the Lumbridge chef. I'm sure he's still grateful for me saving his ass with that birthday cake debacle that happened a while back. So he gives me the next step with no additional work, which is very nice. Now I've got to dig somewhere outside of a rock, so I teleport back and with a spade in my hand, I'm able to claim my prize. Very nice, I get a blue wizard hat. I definitely already have one of those, but it's a beginner clue, so I'm going to assume these are more like the introduction to this kind of content. Nothing super incredible is probably going to come from them. Alright, let's move on to the easy clue scroll now. Alright, so the first step here is to enter the Sinclair Mansion and talk to Louisa. Louisa? I don't know. This is a place that I've never been before, and I was a little worried that I wouldn't be able to enter because I thought it was some sort of quest requirement to do that? Luckily, I was wrong, and I was able to get the next step of the clue with no issue. Now I have to make my way all the way down to the Wizard's Tower, rummage through someone's personal belongings, and find the next step. Let me tell you, there's a lot of walking in this game. I'm not sure if y'all realize that. Now, I know there's a bunch of teleports, but here's the truth of it. I'm... I'm real lazy and I haven't looked I haven't looked into getting those for myself yet. I'm sure if I get tired of walking I'll eventually figure out what are the best teleports, but there's just so many, dude. There's just so many. Anyway, I make my way back up to Varrock. I commit a B&E in Gertrude's house. Like the professional sneak that I am, I make my way into there to find the second reward casket. In this one, I get a black plate body, looks pretty cool, and I also get some green highlighter things, mushroom, I don't know, I have no idea what they're used for. I, I'll probably look it up later. Maybe. Alright, time for the medium clue. Now, full disclosure, I have done a medium clue on this account before, and it didn't really take me that long, so I'm expecting the same for this one. Alright, looks like I have to get to the fishing platform. Hey, 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 can I get to the, can I go to the fishing platform? Hey, hey you, hey, uh, Captain, hey, fisher guy, can I go to the fishing platform? F no? Alright, fuck. So, as it turns out, in order to get to the fishing platform, you need to start the quest Sea Slug. 
So I guess this is turning into a speed run guide of that quest. So let's get to it. First, we need to talk to Caroline. Her kid and her husband are missing and were last seen near or on the fishing platform. So we talked to this captain guy, but before he takes us there, we have to fix his boat with some gross ass paste shit or something like that. Man, where is this swamp tar? I could have swore it was here in the underground. Oh my God, 12 points of damage. Holy shit, that thing does not fuck around. Where is this stuff? Oh, God damn it. All right, future me, cut this out of the video so no one sees how dumb I am. In order to make this paste, we need swamp tar, flour, and then we need to cook it. Okay, now with the flour ground up and mixed into the paste, I just need to cook this thing. What do you mean I don't have anything to cook? I got this paste right here. I need an open flame? That seems oddly specific, but all right, I guess I'll just go make one on top of the castle. We take the swamp paste back to the captain. He fixes up his boat and then takes us to the fishing platform. Look at that, right over there is our next clue step. But I've already started this quest and honestly, I'm gonna see it through. Let's just get it finished real fast. So I guess you can consider this a distraction within a distraction. All right, so we talked to this kid uh, who wants us to save his dad. We talked to the dad who saves us from brain slugs. Hey, thanks for the help, Kent. But um, like you could you could probably just swim back to land, right? Like I can see both the fishing platform and some land just right over there. My draw distance is pretty high, but I mean, you could still probably make it. It's not that far of a swim. Did did you just want some time? Did you just need some time away? Is that what was going on? What, what's going on here? We get a torch and then torches some stuff. I don't really know. I was just trying to finish this quest as soon as possible. This seems pretty inefficient. Like, why am I specifically using damp sticks when I could just get dry wood and a tinderbox? But instead, I'm out here using the sun and glass like a first grader trying to kill ants. This is a cool animation, so I'll give him that. We bust down this door for the kid to crawl through. And then we have our heavy operator's license, apparently. And we use this crane to send the kid lower down to the depths where he will definitely be safe and not injured in any way. Honestly, I have no idea where I'm lowering this kid down to. Do I have a boat waiting below? Well, I mean, I guess if the kid is gone, then it's not really my problem at that point. It sounds like a win-win to me. Oh, the captain was down there waiting for the kid. I knew that. And with that, it is quest complete. Man, I should really do guides for this game. The next step of our clue is to go to Ice Mountain and dig in a certain spot. You ever feel like you're forgetting something? I don't know, something that's displayed on the screen in bright red letters? Something that looks like a spade and feels like a spade and ah, oh, god damn it, I forgot my fucking spade. I truly can't tell you how many times I forgot to bring one of these with me while I was doing a clue. I should really just have one of these on me at all times because it seems like you have to dig quite a lot for these different clues. Anyway, we get the next step, and with the completion of some of the gnomes quests, I now have access to their gliders, which is great because I need to go all the way to Karamja, I think. I make my way to Al Karid, and then with the use of the gnome gliders to Karamja. Look at this. Aren't y'all proud of me? Using another means of transportation other than my feet? This is a big step, honestly. I pushed my way through the jungle. I almost drowned in this river. Luckily, I'm an excellent swimmer. And all of this to receive my next medium casket reward. In this one, I get a bunch of runes, which is nice. I get some armor pieces that aren't really useful, but I do get an amulet of power, which is really cool, and I think I'll be wearing that. Okay, that took me a little longer than last time, but hopefully this next clue won't take me as long. Okay, now let's take a look at the hard clue. 
Oh, I just have to talk to Hans for the first step? Oh, sick. That's super easy. Hey Hans, how's it going? Uh, I'm working on a clue scroll right now. Uh, what's my next step? Hi. Hello Duelist, here is your next step. You're going to need to go to Zanaris and talk to the Fairy Godfather. Oh, oh okay, that seems alright. I've never heard of Xanaris before. Uh, let me just check the map real fast. Huh. Hey, um, I'm not... I'm not seeing it. Hey, Hans, I don't I don't see Xanaris anywhere on the map. Are you sure that's the right place? I am sure. You need to enter into the realm of fairies in order to get to Xanaris. The, the realm of fairies? Oh, okay. Um, how do I go about doing that? Oh, you'll need to start the quest Fairy Tale 1, Growing Pains. Oh, okay. I'm sure that's I'm sure that's not too bad. Here is the wiki of the requirements for Fairy Tale 1. Hans, what the fuck? This is going to take me forever and this is only the second step. I'm supposed to be putting this into a video, you know. Four clue scrolls in my inventory, four clue scrolls finished in a video. Sounds like a good idea, right? Doesn't that sound familiar? God fucking damn it, Hans. You really, really fucked me on this one. I am sorry. Please stop yelling. I am only an NPC and cannot change what has happened. Do you know what it's like to have no control over your life? I mean, oh God, Hans. I'm sorry. I didn't look. It's just, it's fine. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll start working on this and then... Uh, and then, hey, I'll, I'll show you the reward. How about that? That would be nice. Please come back and show me what you get from the casket. All right, you got it, Hans. Uh, just uh, just hang in there, man. I'll, I'll be back in a little bit, and then I'll, I'll show you what I get. It'll be real fun for both of us. I'll be here, waiting, like I always am, never able to leave, never able to wander, stuck here, forever. All right, um... Uh... I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just go, Hans. All right, the next step of the clue is to talk to the fairy godfather. And in order to do that, I need to enter into Xanaris. Now to do that, I need to complete the quest Lost City. I start this quest by talking to the D&D &D party outside of Lumberge Swamp. The barbarian being full of class stereotypes is about as smart as you expect, meaning that he is dumb as shit. And he tells me that there's some kind of leprechaun hiding in a tree. So we smack that shit until he falls out. And then he tells us that the entrance to Xanaris isn't some dinky ass shed that we've already been in. But the secret is that we did not have a Draman staff equipped at that time. We need one of those in order to teleport there. The way that we get this staff is by killing a tree spirit on the island of Entrana. Now, to get to Entrana, we need to talk to a monk, but we are not allowed to bring any sort of weapons or armor to this island. Now, I'm a fucking idiot, and you can see my inventory right now, and you can also notice how it is vacant of any useful items. Yeah. So, I just kind of went into this raw and hoped for the best. I think you can all see how this ends for me. Well, I kick the shit out of this zombie skeleton thing, I get the bronze axe that it drops, And then we chop at this tree. As you can see, this fight is going just about as you would expect, honestly. And wow, in a shocking turn of events, I get fucking destroyed by this tree spirit. As it turns out, reading is not my strong suit. Uh, and it was at this time that some of my friends on Discord told me that I need to actually read the quest guide and bring runes to cast magic on this tree spirit in order to kill it. With full determination and an inventory of runes and no food because I forgot to bring some, I make my way down once again, kick this thing in the crotch to get the axe, and then I attack the tree once more. This time, with the power of magic, I am able to kill it and claim my reward. That reward being as many of these branches as I can carry. I turn all of the branches into stabs because fuck it, why not? And then I go to the shed, and just like that, I can get teleported to Xanaris. Oh, this place looks really cool. I like it here. Nice color scheme, I'm all about it. 
All right, so now where is the fairy godfather? Hmm. He's not here. So, as it turns out, you do have to do fairy tale part one in order to make him up here. So Hans was right. Great. The next thing on the list of requirements is nature spirit. And let me tell you, of all the quests in RuneScape, this is one of them. So I talk to Drizzle, I get some pies, and then I head into Mortmire, where I need to uh, enter into this like little cave thing. I jump over this bridge, no problem. Come on, Settle, it didn't seem that hard. Now I have to talk to this guy who is a ghost, but wants to become a nature spirit or something. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna be 100% honest, guys. I didn't pay attention to this quest fucking at all. I generally have an idea of what quests are, or what happened when I write this script. I ain't got nothing for this one. I got no fucking clue. I think we get like a spell. We get um we get some mushrooms. We have to make a silver sickle and get it blessed at some point. And I need all of this to like beat up some ghasts or ghouls or fucking something i don't know i help me i don't know i really am kicking a lot this episode look at my feet go dude I'm beating the shit out of this ghost thing oh wait i have a sickle i should be using that oh i'm fucking dumb i apologize to anyone whose favorite quest is Nature Spirit. I wasn't paying attention, and honestly, no, that's that's kind of it. I just wasn't really paying attention while I was doing this, or while I was writing the script, because uh, it's, it's not the main focus here. Sorry. Hey, would you look at that? It's quest complete. Finally, it is time to start Fairy Tale Part 1. We need to talk to Martin, the Master Gardener, and he wants us to talk to some other farmers around to figure out what is going on with the crops. Wait, you're telling me this group's name is Group of Advanced Gardeners, as in G-A-G, or GAG for short? That's fucking hilarious. So all of these farmers have some idea of what's messing with the crops, but they all are different, and only one has the correct answer, I believe. The master farmer tells me that the fairy angle is promising and that I should probably follow up on that. With my newly acquired Draman staff, I go to Xanaris and oh, would you look at that? There's the fairy godfather. But he's a bit distracted right now because the queen has apparently fallen ill. Also, is this dialogue super fucking offensive? Is it just me? This is the most stereotypical Italian it's a me a Mario bullshit that I've ever seen. And I'm here for it. It's fucking great. The Godfather tells me to talk to Fairy Nuff. Great name, by the way. To get some information. And I think this fairy has some of my favorite dialogue in old school RuneScape to date. This section is gold. It is so funny. She tries so hard to believe that we are not just some dumb shit adventurer. And we let her down at every single turn. It's amazing. Fair enough, tells us that the queen has had a run-in with a creature named a Tanglefoot, and they're apparently very, very dangerous. Nuff gives us a list of symptoms to take to Xandar, a wizard that owes her a favor. Are you sure this is safe, fairy? Like, this guy looks like one of the bad guys, I'm not gonna lie. Regardless, we talk to him, and he tells us that a Tanglefoot would normally straight-up kill his victim. So the fact that the queen is just in a coma right now leads him to believe that the queen was drained of her life essence being pure magic intentionally. The next step is to defile a grave and bring the skull to another mage who can help me find a way to kill this tangled foot and restore the queen. The list of materials given here is random, which I think is kind of cool. All right, so I got to get some secateurs, which I think everybody has to. I need a Mortmeyer Mushroom. That's easy enough. I got some of those during Nature Spirit. Uh, a Nature Talisman. That one, that one might be a little bit tough. 
And I have to get a clean Avanto herb. Uh, that one. That one's going to be an issue. I don't have anywhere near the herb lore. Herb lore level to get that. So that's not super cool. Since I have to have clean herbs for the quest, I don't think I'm going to spend more time grinding out a skill just to clean this one herb. So with the magic of money and the grand exchange, I buy all the stuff that I need. And I head to the newly appointed nature spirit to bless my secretaries. Oh, these things are cool. They're all nice and green. With the green cutters, it was time to take on the Tanglefoot. Uh, this time, I am properly prepared. Thank God. I have an inventory full of food as well as armor, and I'm ready for fucking anything. All right. I just got to squeeze through this wall right here. Oh my fucking god, that looks so bad. That looks awful. Holy shit. Oh. I guess that wasn't too much damage, thank god. I want to remind everybody real fast that this is the second step of this clue. <laughs> oh my god. Like, I understand that it is a hard clue, but it's not even like... That's not even like the hardest variant of this shit. I can't even imagine what doing, like, a master clue scroll is like. It's got to be just... There's got to be so much to do. There's got to be so much involved with that. Alrighty, and we're going to do some live commentary for this, because it seems kind of like a boss fight. Alrighty, so we got to make our way through this, like, kind of maze thing. Uh, it's not too much of a maze, honestly. I just click the right direction. Alright, here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna pray melee. See if I can see if I can prayer flick like I know what I'm doing. I'm hitting for like fours. That's not too bad. It only has 102 HP. That's not too that's that's not that much honestly. Looks like four is the max I can hit. I should probably set up quick prayers. My friend told me that I should do that, but I I don't I don't exactly know what I'm doing with that. I'll, I'll figure that out later. This guy's barely touched me. He's done. Has he done any damage? That might just be from the the spike trap, actually. Alright, alright. Yeah, I think I think we kinda got this in the bag. This was this was not hard. Fairy godmother or the queen, sorry. Like you You got fucked up by this thing? Alright, well, you know. Maybe fighting's not her strong suit. Yeah, I didn't even I didn't even need that. I didn't need any of my food. All right, well, cool. With the queen's secretaries in hand, we take them back to the fairy godfather, and that is finally, finally quest complete. And we can get on with our next step of the clue. Okay, everyone, it is time. It is time to see what comes next for this clue scroll. Let's talk to the fairy godfather here. What's up, my guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The answer is 64. Trust me, I got this.
Okay, now, next step. Fossil Island? Fuck. Well, as most of you probably guessed by the length of this video, I am not going to be able to complete this scroll in one video, unfortunately. That's because I don't have access to Fossil Island, and there's a whole bunch of prerequisites to do that. So, I got a few more quests to get done, and hopefully, I can uh, get that taken care of in the next one, I suppose. So, the first thing we need to tackle is the Dig Site quest. To start this, we talk to the Varrock Museum Curator, who gives us the AOK -okay to become a student of archaeology. With this paper in hand, we run all the way down here to the examiner. No name, just examiner. That's rough. Anyway, we get grilled by her to figure out how much we know about their studies. Shockingly, we don't know anything. Literally, we don't get any of these questions right. So, as to not look like a complete dumbass, we talk to these three people over here around the dig site. But before we do that, they all want to get something from us. Luckily, with the power of Runelight, we are essentially psychic and gather all of those items before we talk to them. And then we get the information as fast as possible. With the help of those students, we are able to retake the test and pass it this time with flying colors. The color is blue, by the way, because that's what it told me to click on. And honestly, the next section of this quest is exactly the same. We get stumped by the exam questions, and then we have to go back to talk to these students, and bada bing, bada boom, that next test is done. And guess what? The next step is the same as the previous two. Don't know the questions, talk to the students, get the items, take the test. I'm literally an expert at this point. I also want to bring attention to some of this multiple choice dialogue. Like, how do you prepare samples? You know, just spread some banana on it and you're good to go. It's too fucking good. At this point, we're able to use the dig site and we need to find something that will impress the expert over here. So I spend way too long digging in the same spot to find this talisman. Seriously, look at all of the items I dug up here. There's a fucking million of them. We take the talisman back, and he gives us the okay to dig in these shafts after we give the workman right over here the right papers. We climb down these shafts and find a Mr. Deeping down there, where we ask how to move a large pile of rocks. So I'm just going to summarize this next part. We make a fucking bomb. Yeah, we're going to blow these rocks to smithereens. Looking at this script, it is very clear that I have no idea how to spell that word. Anyway, we blow these rocks up, get the thingy, and then that is quest complete. For the next section, I need to earn kudos at the Varrock Museum. So I clean off a bunch of samples, I place them back into their respective displays, and then I also let this historian know of all the things I've been able to do, like completing quests and stuff like that, and it gives me just enough kudos to start the Bone Voyage quest. Luckily, that section was much faster than the previous one. Thank God. Now to do the last quest for this requirement. Bone Voyage. Great name, by the way. I really love the writing of the names in this game. I know I've said it a few times, but it's just it's just so charming. So we start this by talking to the foreman, and he tells us that we need to get some wood for his new boat. Uh, but we need to talk to the sawmill operator near Barok first. Simple enough, I walk over there and chat him up. He tells us that his wood isn't up for the challenge of sailing, so we need to talk to the woodcutting guild in Hosidius to see if they can provide the lumber for this expedition. After talking to the wood people, we find out that the wood requested is redwood, which is fucking crazy because those things are huge. Is this going to be like a cruise ship or something? With the wood being sent over, all is good in that department, and now we can meet the crew. And oh boy. Remember what I said about the writing? This section right here is exactly what I'm talking about. It's great. The navigator tells us all of the horrific shit that has happened. And you know what? In fact, why don't why don't I just let him tell you? Yeah, so the first boat didn't really float. The second suffered from 
feature creep, which means they kept adding shit that it really didn't need. Uh, the third was made of some aphrodisiac, I think, and a sea monster came to it. The fourth used a different type of aphrodisiac, but this one only worked on icebergs. Uh, the fifth one crashed into the sixth one. We straight up lost the seventh, I have no idea where we put it. And then the eighth one is here, but about 12 seconds out of sync, so we can't really use it. The ninth one was made out of magic logs, so it kind of became sentient in a way. Then it developed a severe depression and then ran into Crandor. So, you could say that this voyage hasn't gone quite as well as you would like. Oh my god, this shit is cursed, literally. So, it is our job to find a way to protect the crew from this curse. Uh, in order to do that, we talk to this pirate guy over here. Uh, him and Ahab tell us that there are two main options to protect from this curse. Uh, one thing is a like a potion or a drink called sea legs, and the other is like a special set of bones. We talk to this old man who gives us the bones, so that was simple enough. Now, in order to make this sea legs potion, we need to get two things of vodka and an unfinished Marantil potion that we can take to the apothecary in Varrock. Holy, two vodkas? Wait a minute, that's that's great. That's gonna be so strong. That's a that's a strong potion, let me tell you. We take both of those items back to the navigator and begin the journey. And as it turns out, I was right. That potion was very strong. So strong, in fact, that anyone who drank it is now passed out on the floor. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Okay, we have to be the captain right now, and we have to pilot this ship to the island so that we don't end up being the 10th ship in that long list of failed voyages. You might not believe it, but I had no idea what I was doing in this little mini game. But it was kind of cool. This is the first uh, mini game in a quest, I think. I know that there's more in the future, because I've watched by release and stuff like that, but this was the first one I did, so that's pretty cool. Took me a little while to get my bearings on it, but you know, we eventually got there. Luckily, I am good at what I do, and we safely make it to Fossil Island and finish the quest. Nice. It is now finally time to get on with the next step of the clue. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so we just need to dig right over here. And, oh shit, it's a fight. I am wearing graceful, I have nothing on me to fight, and now I shall run away! Okay, back at it again. I forgot to bring anti-poison. I fucking, what is wrong with me? I literally just died to this poison a second ago. Oh well, at least I have food, I should be fine. Oh god, this poison is gonna be the death of me. I can tell already. Okay, zeros across the board. Who the fuck is this guy? Oh, he's doing the same thing I'm doing. Nice. Oh, he's praying mage. Oh my god, he's destroying his. Holy shit. That's a 10. That's pretty good. Okay. Eight. Okay, it looks like he's... Ow. Ow. It looks like he's only doing melee attacks now. So, I'm gonna switch to prey me Ow, fuck. Prey melee. Oh, he... He, imme he immediately swapped, and I wasn't fast enough. He played me like a fucking fiddle. He played me like a goddamn fiddle. Alright, this is what I like to call desperation. Round two. Putting prayer on. Got anti-poisons. Here we go. I have a swap of gear just in case. We'll see if I need it. Oh my god, he's hitting me so fucking hard. This is not a good... Not a good thing. Ow. Ow. Actually, let me put this on. Since I have Prey Mage up. I'm correct in my thinking, he won't attack me with 
any lightning if I have Prey Mage on. I don't have Quick Prayer selected. I forgot to do that. Whatever. Okay. Put some more defense on. I don't know if that's a smart call, but we're doing it. I don't... <sighs> Fuck. Yeah, there we go. I can do this, but... Honestly, I'm just going to leave it up. Hopefully it's good. Take this tuna on the floor. <laughs> it's my desperation. This dude's so fucking mean. Oh my god. Stop hitting me so hard, please. I just want your fucking... I just want your loot. Okay. Okay, we're making good progress here. Is that 44 HP? 36 now? Drink my anti-poison? Fuck you, that's right. Oh, it's a 10. Oh, we've got to have this, right? My prayer's getting mighty low, though. That's kind of scary. Come on. No, stop. Stop. Okay. Okay, come on. Two prayer points left. Come on, he's almost dead. Okay, I'm out of prayer. Oh, this could be bad. Yeah, just keep just keep mailing me. That's fine. Yes! Yes, get fucked! Another clue. All right. After finally taking down that literal fucking nightmare, I get my next step, which is to head to Catherby and speak to, uh, Elena? I Eleni, I'm so sorry. Eilena? I'm sorry. She gives us a little puzzle thing, and thankfully with Runelite... God, Runelite's so fucking good, by the way. It is no trouble at all to complete it. Alright, looks like we're headed to Karamja. I've got to wear some of those things, and it looks like it'll be another... Fight. Thankfully, this time it tells me what like combat level it is, so hopefully I can be prepared this time. All right, and he is dead. Perfect. Now I need to re-emote, I believe. Yes, the next step is a fairy ring. Oh fuck, I don't think I have access to those. Okay, let me just let me just look and see how do I get access to fairy rings. I have a bad feeling about this. Oh, it's just fairy tale part two. Cool, no problem. What are the requirements for that? Oh no. Please anything but that. Luckily, however, you don't actually need to finish the quest in order to gain access to the fairy rings. You just have to start it. So don't mind me. I'm just going to start it real fast and not finish this quest for a long, long time. They literally make you wait five minutes just standing here, staring at the master farmer, gazing into his eyes, uncovering his secrets with no words exchanged. Once those five minutes are up, we head into Xanaris, look through Fairy Nuff's things, and oh wow, this place looks like shit. Uh, oops. Anyway, we find a document that I'm pretty sure is written in Wingdings. We match it to a wall that also has Wingdings written all over it, and then we talk to the Fairy Godfather. Can you tell that I was not paying attention at all during this time? All I wanted to do was finish this scroll, and by god, I will fucking do it if it is the last thing I do. 
The fairy godfather tells us something or other, gives us access to the fairy rings, and then we teleport all over the place so we can use them at our own leisure. Now, I fucked up this teleport a bunch of times, so we're going to pretend like I knew exactly what I was doing, and I'm going to cut all of that out, so don't worry about it. And truly after too long, we teleport to this small island with a spade in hand. Are you guys proud of me? I fucking remembered it this time. I dig up my very first hard clue scroll reward casket. All right, let's see what's inside. Okay, it's worth 104k. That's pretty exciting. I'll be honest, it doesn't it doesn't really look that impressive to me. Okay, let's see. We got a we got a rune long sword. I already have one of those. I get 13 of these things. I don't know what those are. A magic longbow and then some nature runes. Oh, they're called purple sweets. And oh my god, they're worth a lot of money. What the hell? All right, well, that's kind of cool. Hey Hans, a uh, promise is a promise. So here's what I got out of the uh, hard clue scroll that you uh, gave me a little while back. I know it's it's been a while, but uh, here here's what I got. I got a uh, rune long sword, pretty cool. I got these purple sweets, which are really valuable. I didn't know. I got a magic longbow and some nature runes. So that's kind of cool, right? Hans? Who are you and what are you talking about? That hurts, Hans. That hurts. Hello and welcome back everyone. This is going to be a big one. Normally this is the part where I give you a little bit of a rundown of what happened in the last episode, but all we did was complete my first hard clue, so that's taken care of. I want this cool red sword because I've been told that it is very good and will be very good for me for a long time. Just look at it. It looks fucking sick. Now, in order to get this cool red sword, I need to complete a little quest that you may or may not have heard of called Monkey Madness. This is apparently one of the most iconic quests in this game. And from what I have read and seen, it's probably going to be the most difficult one for me to date. Yeah, even more difficult than Dragon Slayer. That's pretty crazy, right? Like, they're monkeys. How hard can it be? Oh, okay. W well, without any more delay, it's time to get started. It's time to take on Monkey Madness. In order to begin, we need to talk to the Gnome King Narnod once again. Hey, how's it going, King? He tells us that he made Glaufry, Glau Glaury, I don't know how you pronounce that name, still don't. Uh, he made him resign and he placed a gnome named Darrow? Darrow in charge. God, I'm going to butcher these fucking names. The king also tells us that they have lost contact with some gnomes posted on the shores of Karamja and he wants us to check it out. Uh, we use a gnome glider and speak to a GLO Karanok and he tells us that he doesn't know anything about this 10th squad. Now, the reason why this is such a big deal is because the 10th squad is essentially like an elite military squad for the gnomes and for them to just go radio silent is bad. So we're trying to figure out what's going on. Now, I don't really trust this guy. Uh, my character, I'm sure, thinks he's our best friend or something. But me, the player, I don't trust him at all. We head back to the king. And honestly, in a shocking twist, our character also doesn't really trust this GLO person. That's a new one. We have to tell Darrow everything that we've learned so far. Damn, this guy looks like he's fucking ready for anything. Darrow tells us that we better be ready for an adventure because in order to validate the claims of GLO, I'm just going to start calling him Glow from now on, we need to go where no gnome has dare gone before. Far to the south of Karamja, we need to go to the island of Ape Atoll. 
In order to get there, we need to fly using some of Gluffrey's gliders, but they don't appear to be operational right now. Oh wow, it's a slide puzzle. Very cool. As a kid, I would have fucking hated these. Honestly, I'm not that big of a fan either, but with the help of Rune Light, it's truly so simple to figure out. With the sliding puzzle done, the gliders come to life, and it's time for these Autobots to roll out. No, you didn't you didn't like that one? Look, I'm not gonna stop writing jokes, okay? It's it's what I'm doing right now. Also, this pilot's name is Wadar. That's incredible. I love that. After we land, we need to talk to this guy over here. And hold on, sandwich lady. Can't you see them in the middle of something? Did this guy just refer to me as human? I think they've all been doing that. That's kind of messed up. I don't just call them like gnome or short stuff or anything like that. Why, yes, I will take a square sandwich. Thank you very much. I don't think these gnomes like me very much. They're not willing to protect me or help me at all, really. Oh, we're going to get a cutscene. Nice. It's the glow guy. Oh shit, I knew he was bad news. I like that the audience is getting a little view into what's going on through this cutscene. Keeping the character themselves in the dark, but keeping us, the player, in the loop is pretty fun. I like that. It's also really in-depth so far for just like the first part of the quest. It seems to be much more involved than the other ones have done so far. All right, so now we need to infiltrate Apatol properly. In order to do that, we have to get shot by a bunch of arrows, and then we end up in jail. Okay, cool. It looks like I need to break out of here. And it looks like I can just pick this lock. Cool. I just have to wait for the right time, and... What the... What the fuck? I wasn't even picking the lock yet. Damn, I guess Kerchek over here doesn't want me going anywhere near that door. Okay, I don't know what I expected with that one. That one's on me. All right, let's get around this corner real fast. And of course he can't see me through these bars. Duh. Man, fuck off, you little shits. I'm trying to sneak out of here. Can't you see that? All right, I think this is my chance. Never mind, I'm going back to the corner. Come on, dude. Don't you want to hang out with your friend over there? Just go in that little room. Just hang out, chill, kick back. Okay, here we go. Finally, we are out and we're going to make it across the village. Going to make sure to take this uh, specific path and also pray range because there's about 175 archers ready to 360 YY quick scope me off of high rise. We make it across the village and we find this gentleman named Garkor. And this guy is, this guy is hardcore. Hardcore Garkor. Maybe that's what they're going for. I don't know. He tells us that his squad has been split up and captured and has been spying on the king ever since. The king... A Woa guy? Oh my god, these fucking names, dude. Garkor tells us that he needs us to find his squad's mage in order to help us become disguised as a monkey. He says that we're a perfect fit because humans and monkeys are very similar, according to them. I'm not going to read too much into that, but I think I understand what he's trying to say, especially if magic is involved. Man, random stuff really do just be attacking you out here. It's fucking rough. Call me Dwayne the Rock Johnson because now I'm the Scorpion King. <laughs> oh, that's fucking stupid. With some foresight, we gather the materials that is necessary and then we head down into this hellscape. Honestly, this place... This place is fucking rough. There are monkeys left, right, and center ready to beat my ass at any given moment. Luckily, I did bring a bunch of food. I brought probably way too many anti-poisons. Uh, the only thing I wish I had at this time was like better armor, but you know, I can just pray hopefully and the graceful will hopefully carry me to where I need to go. Following the trail after being bloodied and bruised, we finally find the mage Garkor was talking about, Zooknok. Uh, he helps us create the materials for a monkey speak amulet. That's good, maybe I can reason with these guys pretty soon. The next step we have to do is to get a talisman from this child monkey. Now this section took me forever because I just couldn't, I couldn't get the pattern down 
or something. I don't know. I just, I kept getting the cops called on me by the ant and it wasn't fun. After a while though, we give the little child the bananas and then he gives us this little talisman that he claims is a toy. Don't worry, kid. I'll surely not lose it. There's no way I'll do that. Once we get the talisman, we need to collect some bones and visit Zooknok once again. Now, I'm not going to tell you how I fucked this up because you can probably see what's happening right now. In my defense, the quest helper didn't say that you needed regular monkey bones. In hindsight, it's pretty obvious that I should have done that, but yeah, I didn't. Look at me, so blissfully ignorant to my mistakes. Oh, it looks like we get another cutscene. No, not Waydar. Not my boy with the funny name. Fuck. Maybe he's just, uh, maybe he's just talking to Glow. Maybe there's nothing going on here. What are the human? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just a dude. I'm just a guy. Yeah, that's right. I fucked up Glow. Gluff. Gluff. I don't fuck. Oh, no, he is evil. Man. Come on, Waydar, you're better than this. Oh, it looks like they're trying to pin me for an assassination attempt. I don't like that. That's fucked up. I get the Gree Gree and I make my way all the way to the zoo where I need to talk to this uh, monkey minder guy who's been talking about how his monkeys are escaping and whatnot. So I need to get in there and talk to a monkey, I think. I transform and oh, would you look at that? I'm a zombie. Hey, you want to let me into the pen with the other monkeys? See, it was at this point that I realized that I had fucked up and I would not only need to get the talisman again, but even worse, I would have to run all the way back through that tunnel to get to Zooknock again without that nice little blue line to help me. I hate myself if you couldn't guess that already. Get over here, you little shit. Give me your bones. All right, so the correct Gree Gree has been made. Now the Minder needs to let me into this pen or I swear to fucking God. All right, cool. I am able to kidnap or I guess monkey nap this little guy and take him back to the king. Hey, uh, can you can you let me out of this monkey pen that I totally didn't magically put myself in? Thanks. This big boy right here is in my way and he will not fucking move. I eventually figure out what I have to do by looking it up and I didn't realize that I had to go talk to this ninja monkey on the wall over here to get permission to see the king first. The king tells me that to prove myself as an ally to the monkeys I need to rescue one of their kind from the zoo and oh wow would you look at that I just so happen to have a monkey in my back pocket you know no reason, just in case something like this were to pop up, right? Crazy. Once we bring the king his captive, we're able to talk to Garkor, and he congratulates us on a job well done, but he also mentions that, unfortunately, it might be a little bit too late. He then tells us, in the form of a cutscene, that Glow and Waydar have already gotten to King Awoa guy, and they have plans to deal with the 10th squadron members and blame it on me, the human, so that there would be a two-pronged war, essentially, monkeys and gnomes versus the humans, just like what Glo Gluff would have wanted. So, yeah. Could have gone better. Could have gone worse. Right? All right. Now it's showtime. After everything is said and done, Garkor gives me the 10th squad pin, and I need to ready myself to fight the jungle demon. Alright, so with this inventory, I think I will be okay. The wiki says that I need to pray mage against him, so that's what I'm going to do. Now, looking at my inventory, you can probably see one fatal flaw. I didn't bring any prayer pots. Honestly, it... 
almost honestly it almost didn't matter i was doing pretty well up until the very end i got him down to three hp like three or four times and i just couldn't hit the last spell it just wouldn't land i get just kept missing and missing at the worst times and he kept resetting his hp over and over and over again and by the time it was all over i ran out of prayer and that was kind of it i couldn't heal through it so yeah you can probably guess that i died to this one round two fight round two baby here we go this time i did bring a prayer pot and a whole lot of swordfish after the death, I was reading that you can technically safe spot this guy on the ledge over there to the left, but I really wanted to take him down without doing that. So I did my best to keep my prayer going, and after a really long fight once again, I was finally able to hit this last firebolt and the demon finally fell. Garcourt congratulates us on our victory and he tells us to talk to Zooknock over there to have him telly us out of here. Hey bud, how's it going? Hey, can you help me get out of here? Azuknok, what the what the hell? Couldn't you have put me at the, I don't know, Grand Tree, Lumbridge, or maybe anywhere else that's not filled with poisonous fucking creatures? Eventually, we make it back to the king and we tell him that the mission is finished and we were successful. We are officially part of the 10th squad because we're so fucking cool. And we honestly need to wait for Darrow to show up to tell the king the full details because the king wouldn't believe us if we told him. It's kind of rude, don't you think? Regardless, the king tells us that in order to be a full-fledged member of the 10th squad, we need to train like the 10th squad. That means Darrow and I stay up all night. We train our little hearts out to get some fat XP drops. Oh, hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Now, some of you eagle-eyed viewers may notice that my attack level is not quite high enough to use the Dragon Scimitar, but with the power of editing and a few hours at Ammonite Crabs, we have the attack level to wield this bad boy. Now let's go get it. Let me go check the price real fast. This guy sells it for 100k. Let me just check the GE price real fast. 60k that's a little bit more my speed oh that looks so good that looks so sick hell yeah and i gotta say this quest was really fun it was super frustrating at times but i can see why it's so iconic i can only imagine going into this thing blind trying to run across apatol no like anti-poisons on the first try or just back everyone in the last episode we completed monkey madness one of runescape's most iconic quests now to get right into it i think i have found the gear setup that i want to use for the fight caves now just as a heads up this is subject to change uh, because there is a lot of things that are just kind of out of my price range but even with some things changing around yeah it's gonna cost me quite a lot and if we take a look at my total cash Hmm, there's a bit of a difference going on here. Some of these I will try and get the legit way, but others I will definitely be buying. So I do need to make some money in order to get some of these items. And I think one of the best ways to do that, and one of the most interesting ways, for me at least, to earn this money, is to run Barrows. Yes, that's right, killing the brothers and stealing their loot is my plan. But you might be asking, Duel, the title doesn't say anything about doing Barrows, what's going on here? Well, first of all, thank you for being so observant, and second of all, I need a better magic setup because casting Firebolt isn't really going to cut it with these guys. So that's where this bad boy comes in. This is what was recommended to me since I don't have the magic level to use the Trident just yet. There's only one issue. And that's that there's a few quests in my way before I can get this staff. Without further ado, let's get started. 
So in order to get the Ivan staff, I need to start working on the elf storyline. To begin, we need to talk to this old man over here named Edmund, and he tells us that his daughter has gone missing in West Ardoin because she went over to help with some plague that has apparently ravaged the city. Us being the brave adventurer we are, have no idea how bad a plague can be, so we accept the task of finding his daughter. We're a regular knight in shining armor, aren't we? Using Runelight, we're able to pick up all the materials we need to dig a tunnel in Edmund's garden so that we can get under into the sewers and sneak into the plagued city. You see what I did there? That's, that's the name of the quest. Once underground, we put our protective gear on because we're not entirely brain dead. And with a heave and hoe, we can crawl like the little sewer rat we are. Before we begin that crawl, Edmund tells us that we need to find a man named Jethic, an old family friend, I guess. Slithering up the sewer, we immediately find Jethic, and he tells us that Elena, the daughter, was staying with the Renaissance, and that I need to return a book for him, because apparently we just do whatever people tell us to do. Oh, I guess the book was the secret to getting into the house. Whatever. We ask about Elena and we're told that she left the house about a week ago, but never managed to make it home. A young girl apparently saw her being captured by some shadowy figures, which seems a bit excessive for someone who I assume was just trying to go home after helping people affected by a plague. Yeah. We find out where Elena was taken, but we're not allowed because there's some X marking the door as it is plagued or something. So we talk to the town drunk who just happens to be like the mayor, the king, the king, the guy in charge. And we give him this hangover cure, which I'm fairly certain is just chocolate milk with grass in it. Disgusting. And he gives us access to this building. After we talk to Elena, we're able to return to Edmund with the good news. And that is quest complete. Next up is Biohazard. We pick up right where we left off, and I'll be honest, I haven't seen any elves so far in this quest, so I'm a little confused as to why this is called an elf quest line, but I'll find out later, I'm sure, so we're just going to roll with it. We talk to Elena, and we need to retrieve her equipment, but unfortunately, the tunnel we dug has apparently been filled in. Considering that I used that about four minutes ago because I went to use the restroom and that it's already filled, that's a crazy turnaround. But, you know, I guess the game works in mysterious ways. Regardless, we need to talk to Jericho to find another way to get into West Arty, and he mentions something about carrier pigeons. Well, don't mind me. Come on, get in the bag. Come on, I'm going to have so many fucking birds on me. It's going to be so cool. It's going to be so great. We're just going to release all of them. Cause mayhem in this town. We make our way over to the watchtower and release a torrent of pigeons. Uh, oh. I guess it just needs one. Well, I look a little crazy now, don't I? Just walking around with 21 bird cages with me. Huh. Oh, well. We run over to Omar, and he helps us over this wall, which is very nice of him. Now that we're in the city, we need to make the lives of these people even worse, apparently, by poisoning their food. I'm the good guy, right? Like, this is okay what I'm doing? We then impersonate a doctor. I'm not feeling great about this, guys. We impersonate a doctor to gain access to this building where people are just having an awful time, I think, because of me. I'm sorry. To the roof is where we are heading, and we have to kill this man who is honestly probably just doing his job. But that's none of my concern because we're a cool adventurer and the good guy, I'm sure. We find Elena's supplies after dropping some birds, and we make our way back to her. She makes a discovery that when testing her samples with this paper, it doesn't seem to be changing at all. Sounds a little weird to me and to her as well. She tells us to take these samples to, I believe, her mentor, but not before she makes us drop more of our precious bird friends here. And we make our way to the chemist. Apparently, that's his full name. Don't worry about it. And he tells us to get the paper we need. We have to drop off some samples with these uh, errand boys in order to make it into Varrock without getting my stuff stolen. There's a little puzzle going on here. I, I didn't pay attention because Runelight took care of it for me, but we retrieve our items and continue our journey. We have to literally beg this man for a set of priest clothes and oh, oh shit, I'm looking kind of good. 
Not gonna lie. We finally are able to talk to, Gu oh God, Guidor, Guidor, the G-Man over here. And we ask him to retest this sample that Elena gave us. And lo and behold, he finds that the sample is clean, meaning that there is no plague on it, which can really only mean one thing, and that that is the plague is a hoax. So that's kind of fucked up. That's really fucked up, actually. So it made me ask, why is West Ardoin being sequestered like it is? We confront the man who probably knows something about it, being the king, and he tells us that he built a wall and split the city because of his brother, who used to be the king of West Ardoin, but is now corrupted by a powerful evil. And to keep this evil at bay, he constructed this wall. Interesting. All right, you all know what time it is. The king has asked us to help, and we have accepted it to take on the challenge of stopping Tyrus, his brother. That's right, everyone. It's time for the Underground Pass. As you can see, my inventory is looking nice. Honestly, I'm quite proud of what I have in here. I don't think I have too many items. I think this is a solid setup. First, we need to speak to Koftik, who helps us into this cave. I have seen so much and heard so much about the Underground Pass. This quest has like an air of infamy around it, and I don't want to fuck it up too bad. We'll see how it goes. Using some of the items that I brought, we cross this bridge and then continue deeper. We come upon a 4x4 grid, and we need to make a way across. According to the quest helper, this is a trial and error, so good luck fucker oh shit moment. Ow. Fuck. God damn it. Shit. All right, well, after some error, we make it across. And honestly, now I'm starting to worry a little bit about my food situation. I disarm all of these traps while only taking one instance of damage, thank God. And now I need to collect these orbs. There's one here, 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 and here. Perfect, now we need to run back to this furnace. Ow! I forgot about the traps. That, that really fucking hurt. We smelt all of these balls down and then head back, this time checking for traps. And now we need to climb down a well. Well, that's not good. God, I fucking hate myself. At this point, we're just traveling from point A to B so we can bypass some of this. Oh, it looks like we need to do something over here with this unicorn. Uh, oh, 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 that's, that's fucking brutal. Jesus. Okay. Ah, and here we are. It looks like I need to get these talismans from these paladins. But first, yes, please. I will take some of your food. Thank you so much. And now you're dead. You're dead. You're dead. We're still the good guys, right? Yeah, it's probably fine. Pouring everything that we gathered into the well, it opens up a door for us and we find ourselves in honestly what looks like hell. Koftik has gone completely nuts from being down here for too long, so we need to hurry. We speak to some dwarves who are trapped down here, so we have to help them because we are the good guys, I promise you that. Now we need to get this witch's cat, hop over the gap, okay cool, made it safely, thank god. Grab the cat and now distract the witch to pull some materials out of her chest. Next, I fall on my ass to the depths below, but actually I need to kill these demons up here and gather their amulets. See, now I do feel like the good guy. These guys, like these demons, they can't be up to any good. I fall again and make my way up to this chest, pour some liquid on this doll that I have. I don't know, seems a little weird. I fall again. Luckily, this time, however, I did actually need to be down here to light something on fire. Looks like this casket. It burning. I have to kill a spider for some reason. I kind of stopped paying attention to, like, the mission objectives and just went where I was told. Uh, I need to let this husk bite me for some reason. I kill a man. Oh, God. I kill a man. I steal his clothes. I fall again. 
I make this leap, I confront Ivan, and I use this doll on the altar, and blam, boom, kapow, we have stopped this evil. That's cool. That was kind of cool, honestly. With the Ivan staff in hand, we make our way to the king and tell him we were successful. Now, I had Quest Helper along with me this entire time. I cannot fathom how difficult that quest must have been on release. Because the game doesn't tell you what you need. The game doesn't prepare you for what's about to happen. It just says, yeah, this quest might be hard. Good luck. That's crazy. It would have taken me forever. And let me tell you, middle school me would not have stood a chance in hell completing that quest. There's no shot. my gear setup and i know what you're thinking god damn he looks good oh my god thank you so much the run started out pretty rough i'm not gonna lie i didn't realize there was a prayer draining mechanic and because of that i ended up using way more prayer pots than i needed to but let's all remember that this is a learning experience and this is literally my first time ever doing barrows so just bear with me for a few there were also some nerves going into it, not wanting to die or make a fool of myself in some way. I'm sure I achieved the latter regardless, but that's fine. The kills came faster than I thought. These dudes have terrible magic resist, which makes the Ivan's Blast rip into them, which is kind of nice. I timed my first run, and it came in around 15 or so minutes. Just call me Lightning McQueen at this point, honestly. I'm fucking cruising through these guys. I knew that this was a little slow, but then I watched my friend in maxed gear run through the barrows in about three and a half minutes, so I knew that I was in for a bit of a long journey, but I was here for it. Now, I'm going to stop the video right here, and then I'm going to let you guess how many chests it took for me to get my very first barrows item. Go ahead, write down your answers in the comments below, and we'll see if you're right. No, no, really, go, go ahead, I'll wait right here. Okay, we're good? Perfect, let's get back into it. Auto retaliate. Yeah, auto retaliate is is yeah, it's right there. Okay. Yeah. And then go loot. It'll give you like a couple seconds. All right, here we go. Oh, that's good, right? Oh my god, it's fucking. No, that's good. That's Trash. good. Your voice says it's good, right? <laughs> Holy shit, you got oh, dude. I did eventually get better at the runs, not using as many supplies, but it was still about ten to fifteen minutes per run, which was kind of brutal. I used this gear setup for the first 21 runs before I ended up looking into upgrading some pieces of gear. But before there were any actual gear changes, I went straight to West Arty and I upgraded the Ivan staff to hold more charges because fuck running the underground past that many times. The main thing I wanted to do was increase my prayer bonus because I could tell that's where most of my money and supplies were going. So I looked at a recommended barrow setup from the wiki. And there were four things that I could change in order to be slightly more efficient. First was getting the Artie Cloak from the Easy Achievement Diaries. Second was getting a Combat Bracelet. Third was getting a God Book. And last was getting a Dragon Dagger. Two of those were going to be real easy to get, so I just yoinked them off the GE, being the Combat Bracelet and the Dragon Dagger. So we were good to go there. Getting the Artie Cloak was also pretty easy. It just took a bit of doing, but about... 20 minutes or so later, I completed the Easy Achievement Diary and claimed my prize. Getting the God Book, however, took a little bit more work because I needed to complete the quest Creature from the Deep. With the power of editing, we find ourselves fighting the Dagonoth Mother. Oh my god, please. Oh shit. Oh no. Oh help. Oh please, this is gonna kill me. Oh no. <sighs> oh. No problem at all. I get my green book, and that's an extra plus five prayer bonus. I don't know which book is best. I just picked green because I like the color. So here are the gear changes and stats that changed in accordance to equipping them. 
I like to call this the second era of my Barrows journey. The vast majority of my runs are going to be in this exact setup. I immediately noticed a difference with the prayer bonus and I knew that I made the right choice getting these items. I was able to start taking only two pots and I felt comfortable doing that. I also found out which brothers are the easiest to kill for my setup. In order from easiest to hard, it would go Torag, Varak, Guthin, Aram, Darok, and Carol. But to be honest, most of the brothers are pretty easy except for Carol. I don't know what it is about that guy, but I splash on that dude more than a kid at Soak City. It was fucking infuriating. He just refused to get hit. And I put Darok in the second hardest because, as you know, he can and will fuck your whole day if your prayer drops at the wrong time. Just like that. God damn it. Oh yeah, by the way, we are still dry on getting an item. How are your guesses going so far? That counter's just kind of going up and up, isn't it? Yeah. It got to the point where I looked up to see if there were any prerequisites in order to get the items from the Barrows, because I read it was a 1 in 17 chance if you kill all the brothers to get any item. And let me tell you, when I say for every single run, there was not a brother alive at the end of it. My rewards were just runes after runes after runes, sometimes the occasional bolt rack or stack of coins, but never an item. I did manage to get an elite clue early on, but there's no way in hell I can do that. But learning the ropes of the combat, using supplies, plus literally no drops, I was only making about a few K every trip or so. I was hoping for a big payout from the game, but it taught me really fast that I need to know my place and I have to understand the cruel mistress that is RNG. I felt like I was going crazy, doing run after run, killing these brothers, seeing the same players over and over like a fucked up version of Groundhog Day. I was slowly gaining combat levels because of how long I've been here until eventually the dam broke and there it was. On chest number 66, my very first item, a Carol's Leather Skirt. I was pretty pumped, honestly. I was very excited to see that. Out of all of the brothers, if I were to get gear that I wanted to possibly use, it would definitely be Carol's. So, it's good because I can either use it in the fight caves, or I can sell it for about 450k. So, it's, it's a win-win all around. With my first item finally obtained, you know I had to go to see if I get a back-to-back. -back. And, uh, well, that was underwhelming. In fact, I didn't get another piece of gear until 18 chests later. So even after going 66 dry, I still technically went dry on my second item. These brothers just really don't want to give it up, do they? Oh, and my second item? It's just, you know, the most valuable piece of gear that they have. A Torag Helm, coming in at a cool 88k. Can I get like some Arams for the money, or maybe a Carol's Crossbow so that I can use it, like, in combat? I guess it's fine. And look, maybe my luck has started to turn around, because only a few chests after getting the Torag's Helm, I get... The Torag's Hammers. I mean, at least they look cool, right? But I would still like Torag to honestly stay the fuck away from me. He's stinky and I want to hang out with the cooler brothers Aram and Carol. It was around this time that I decided to take a break from running Barrows to once again look into upgrading my gear. And the only upgrade that seemed reasonable to get for me was the helmet. So I needed to get either the Berserker Helm or the Helm of Nayat's Knot. So that's exactly what I did. I once again will show you with the power of editing that I was able to complete the Fremenic Trials, but when I went to try and buy the helm on the GE, my money just kind of sat there. So instead of waiting, I went and completed the Fremenic Isles. These quests were fine. They were okay. To be honest, I really didn't like Trials that much. It felt just like a lot of running back and forth, back and forth. Fremenic Isles was a bit better. I will definitely say that. Especially this part right here, where I finally had enough of this king's bullshit and I call him out on it. God, fuck this guy. He's so annoying. I'm so glad we just rip into him. I also get my ass handed to me by this troll king because I wasn't paying attention and I got frozen over and over again. Unfortunate. 
And then when I went back to get my body, I had the wrong prayer up or it didn't last as long or something. And I got stacked out by the Rangers at the entrance to the boss fight. So I died again. I was, uh, I was not too happy about that. But what I am happy about is the fact that I now have this troll's head in my bag and I'm about to get a really cool helm and put it on my head. Completing the Fremenic Trials and Isles also serves a secondary purpose on if I wanted to use an Archer Helm in the Fight Caves, so I have access to that in case I want to use it. As a small aside, I also learned how to cook Karam ones, that way I could save a little bit of money there by buying raw ones on the GE. I have to say, fuck these stupid brothers, they're so annoying, and especially this guy right here. Fuck him. Fuck this guy right here. If my character could Ivan Blast this fucker into the sea, he would, and I would too. And this brings us to the third era in my Barrow's career. At this point, I'm only using one prayer potion per trip, and sometimes I only need to use two doses. It was honestly a really cool feeling seeing the difference from when I first started just chugging these bad boys to barely sipping them at all. Some of that is definitely thanks to the gear upgrades, but I do believe that it is also me becoming a better player. Right? It's gotta be. With every run, I felt a bit more comfortable letting my prayer get lower and lower. The same with my HP, kind of figuring out what the max hits of these brothers were, and I was able to stay just above that for the most part. That way I was able to not waste as many supplies, so I can eventually save money in the long run. In order to recoup the cost of all of these runs, I would sell my Chaos and Blood runes, and if I really needed to, I would sell off some of my Death runes to keep my funds going to keep these runs going. This ended up being a very fun experience overall, even though I did go very dry on my first item. To begin this quest, we need to talk to the king after receiving a summons a while ago that I honestly fully ignored until it was convenient for me. Yo, king, what's the next play? Uh, go, go through the underground pass and jump into the magic well or something. You'll figure it out. Oh. Uh, okay, I guess I'll just go fuck myself then. Oh boy, I can't wait to go through the underground pass once again. Now, I didn't record it because it was literally just rewalking through the underground pass, but on this little section right here, I fell more times than I did the entire underground pass quest. It got so bad that I literally had to use this prayer to keep my HP above the kill range for falling damage. I didn't bring food at the time because I'm bad and I forgot, but also I was just kind of expecting to cruise through this without any issue. The game, however, had other plans for sure. We eventually make it past this hellhole and dive into the magical fountain to be teleported to the elf land of Taranwin. I think that's how you pronounce it. Welcome to Taranwin. Do you guys also have days where the invasive thoughts just win and you have no control over your life? Yeah, me too. Anyway, back to the video. We are then instructed by the quest helper to just kind of chill and wait a few. Can I? Hello? Can I please move? Can I please? Hello? Game please? Game? Ah. Hey, oh. Hey, how you doing? Oh. Fuck, that's lame. I liked them. They looked cool as hell. I wanted to talk to them a little bit more. Anyway, with just a little hiccup, no problem there. We move through the trap infested forest and talk to Lord Isleworth stationed at his camp right over here. Lord Isleworth has heard of our exploits and trusts us to carry out this important mission of stopping Tyrus. He tells us to speak with this tracker. Uh, we find the guy over here, but he wants proof that Isleworth sent me. God damn. Damn it, all right, I'll be right back with a fucking letter of recommendation. Here, is that enough for you, Tracker? Good. The Tracker tells me to find the Tyrus camp. Shouldn't, shouldn't that be your job? Like, I'm, I'm literally out here tracking footprints, and what are you doing? 
just sitting out there vibing, just chilling. All right. We have the agility to make our way past these obstacles and then we get attacked. And if you notice my inventory, you can tell that it is fucking empty of useful things. I'm honestly learning that whenever you go on a quest, I should bring stuff to fight and I should bring food, no matter what. I don't know why I always seem to forget that, but you know, here we are. Lessons learned, I suppose. I seek refuge in these traps because he doesn't have the agility level, like a fucking loser. And I make a small detour to a bank to resupply. And yes, that does mean that I once again have to go through the underground pass. At this point, I'm pretty much a pro from running the Ivan staff as well as the quest and running back and forth for this quest. You could just call me a speedrunner at this point. Making my way back to where I was, I find the camp just past these catapults. But first, this guy right here wants some smoke. And honestly, he's no match for my martial prowess. Yeah. And he's dead. We can make our way into the camps. We look around, we steal some shit, but there doesn't seem to be any sign of the king here. We report back to Iowerth. He hands us the literal anarchist's cookbook. And yeah, he tells us that we need to make another fucking bomb. Only this time, the goal isn't to blow up some rocks, but rather to commit an act of war on this camp. I'm the good guy, right? I know I've asked that before, but like, this, this doesn't feel right. Anyway, fuck that. Let's go make a bomb. We grab some barrel, we get this tar stuff and some limestone, turn that into some lime powder or something, combine that with some other stuff. Just call me fucking Walter White because I'm cooking right now. Once we get all these things combined, we talk to the only smart person we know being Elena and she tells us to go back to the chemist in Remington where we play a weird little mini game of don't let this shit explode or you're dead, bada bing, bada no boom, because here we fucking are and we nailed it. We create something called naphtha. Holy shit, this stuff weighs a ton. We are able to make a fuse for the bomb and we get it all set up and ready to go. But now we need to once again make our way through the underground pass. Oh, but not before we cook this rabbit real fast. Don't know if we were going to need a snack along the way, but it's better to be safe than sorry. In a shocking turn of events, I make it through the underground pass with no issues at all. I did not fall one single time with the naphtha which is good because I'm pretty sure if I did fall, this would just explode and that would be the end of my series, which would be lame. We make our way back to the catapults, give this man some rabbit to distract him. Honestly, dude, fucking same. Somebody gives me some tasty food, I completely forget what I'm doing. So that guy fucks off and he leaves us alone with these catapults. I can definitely see where this is going. And just like that, 2 plus 2 is oftentimes 4, and we launched this bomb that we made into the Tyrus camp, even though we have literally no proof that the king was there. But, you know, fuck these guys in particular, right? And now we get to watch a little cutscene for the fruits of our war crimes. Ah yes, this feels good. This feels like we are the good guys, actually. Mm-hmm. The job is now complete, and we tell Lord Iowerth the good news, and he hands us a letter to deliver back to King Lathis, and we make our way over there. After a long day of war, we return to the king, and... Oh, wait. Hey, man, you look cool as fuck. I think your friend died, like, a little while back. Am I about to be, like, assassinated or something? Oh, no, I'm not. As it turns out, our character was dumb as shit the whole time, and... Guess fucking what? We were the bad guys the whole goddamn time. I fucking knew it. I knew this didn't feel right. And now we are left to continue to play the part and eventually make things right for what we have done, which is a lot. We've done a lot of bad shit. Now we have to deliver this fucking letter to this piece of shit king and look him in his smug fucking face. Oh, just you wait, motherfucker. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get your ass for what you made me do. And you made me do a lot, so yeah, you're going to get what's coming to you now. But yay, quest complete. As penance for what we have done, I made myself run 730 laps of the Canifus Rooftop Agility course to become fast as fuck boy, fast as lightning. 
and to earn the respect of the elves. I also kind of just wanted to get full graceful because I think it looks really cool. But that's not the point here. Let's not get sidetracked. This was for my wrongdoings and nothing more. No ulterior motives, just to get back at this king. I hope you're fucking ready, Lathis. I'm coming for you. And that is Regicide. I don't think any actual kings were killed in the making of this video, so I got that going for me at least. We did gain access to a faster method of recharging my Ivan staff, completed that medium clue. Oh, what's inside? It's probably dog ship. I gotta record it just in case. Well, it wasn't Ranger Boots, but it is a new item. I got a brown headband. And apparently it's my lucky day because the quiz master is here. It's a flyer. Here are all of the requirements for Recipe for Disaster. In this episode, we are going to take down all of the level requirements and also make a dent in some of these quest point requirements. The first skills that I want to get done are smithing and mining. The main reason is that those skills are closest to the required level, so I can crank those out really quickly. I check what I can craft and with what metals I can craft them with. I head over to Fossil Island, get a whole bunch of coal to create some steel materials. This process isn't the fastest I know, but it helps me kill two birds with one stone. After getting enough coal, I head straight to the Alcarid mine and spin myself right round to collect as much iron as it takes to get 50 mining right here and now. You spin me right round, baby, right round, like a regular baby, right round, right round. I think it's so interesting all the faster methods of skilling in this game. In my brain, I should just go to the highest level node available for me, mine that, and get my levels that way. But that's not how this game works at all. It's all about how many EXP drops you can get in as few ticks as possible as I'm learning. So here I am just ticking away at these nodes. With the mining taken care of, it was now time to take care of smithing. I look up real fast and find some quests that offer smithing XP. And I do those because they are pretty quick. The ones that I can do are the Elemental Workshop quests. Once I get those done, that'll put me within one level of the requirement. So here we go. Let's get these quests done. What can I say about Elemental Workshop? It's definitely a quest in RuneScape. It's, uh, it's short. God, I just hit my mic. It's, uh, it's short, which is cool. Uh, it gives pretty decent XP. I get to beat the shit out of this guy with his natural enemy being a pickaxe. But honestly, it does let me make these sick ass shields. And ever since I saw those way back in the day, I've always wanted one and I had no idea how to get them because I was too lazy to look it up. But I remember thinking these things were so cool as a kid. And now I have one, which is sick. And now for Elemental Workshop 2. This is also another quest in Old School RuneScape. I use a sword to hit rocks, which doesn't seem like a great idea, but it's made out of dragon material, so it can take some hits, right? I grab this stuff, I make this stuff, I find this stuff, I fix the machine, I create some mind bar or something, I sit in this electric chair and get sapped, and there we go, that's quest completed. Now that those are done, I make my way over to the anvil in Varrock, to get the glorious 40 smithing. There we go, two down and a bunch more to go. Now it's time to create a whole bunch of fires in the middle of town. Smokey the Bear can fuck right off because I need this fire making level. And bam, there it is. Not too bad, that only took me a few hundred logs, I think. And then I make a quick pit stop to finally sell my Torag pieces, which I have been holding on to for a little bit too long for around 170k. And now it's back to skilling. Now, this isn't exactly on the requirements, but hear me out, okay? I need to get 70 cooking. As of right now, I am 56. That's a lot of levels, and I don't want to buy my way all the way to 70. So I'm going to be fishing until level 65. That way I can catch Karambwans and then cook them. This serves a few purposes. One, 
it gets me fishing levels, which is cool. Two, it will get me cooking levels, which I need for this quest. And three, it helps me replenish my food supply because Karam ones are a pretty decent food for me right now. So I'm just chilling at the Barbarian Village until I hit level 58 fishing. And then once I hit that, I can go up here past the Barbarian Outpost and learn the ways of Barbarian Fishing. Now, I could have just stayed and caught normal salmon and normal trout, but I wanted to see what this is all about up here. After learning the ways of the Barbarian, I had to go see what barehanded fishing looks like. And oh my god, that thing is on my arm. Holy shit, That's, that animation is sick as hell. But after seeing the XP per hour of this method, I quickly went back to the mountain and fished there for a long time. I don't exactly know how long, because I don't time myself. But I did have 5,000 feathers to start with, and now I have way less than that, something like 700. So after many hours, it was finally time to stop fishing and then to start... Oh. Uh, to, to start fishing. R right, I'm still fishing. But this time, I go catch Karambwans. I catch them until my bait is gone. Around 1,300 of these bad boys are now in my bank, and it was finally time to cook. Running back and forth from this range in Catherby, I cook and cook and cook these things until they are all gone. This got me to about 63 cooking. That's closer, but not quite good enough. So I then decide that I try something that I saw in a YouTube video from Rog. And he was talking about a video with huge XP drops in cooking with making wine. And I thought, yeah, I'm going to do that. So I bought 2,000 jugs of water and 2,000 grapes. Hey guys, look, I made over a million GP and it's gone. But it'll be worth it, don't worry. This little area right here is what I call my test batch. I just wanted to see how it felt, how the process will work. All right, I got it. I think we're good. And then I stood here like a real RuneScape player just skilling at the Grand Exchange, not letting this wine counter drop was probably the sweatiest I've ever been in the game so far. I had my eyes glued to the screen to make sure that the counter did not drop to zero and ruin my fat XP drop. And after about an hour of that, I mixed the last of my grapes and water and then I waited for it. Oh, hell yeah, that's so sick. That was so fucking worth it. 70 cooking has been achieved, and that is all the skills taken care of. Now, this section of the video is what I'm going to call damage control. These skills that I'm working on are more for making money or just for future endeavors rather than focusing on the RFD requirements. So here's me doing a birdhouse run. I have to say, I fucking love birdhouse runs. They're so satisfying because of how much you get from them and how fast they are. Like four birdhouses, you get, you know, some bird nests, which are worth about 5k each. It's just free passive income and XP. They're fucking great. I love them. Next, I'm also doing tree runs to passively get my farming up just in case I need that for the future, which I do think I will need it for something that has come up fairly recently in my uh, tree run endeavors. This is a great way, again, to just get passive EXP. So here's my route. It definitely won't be the most efficient, but it works for me. So that's all I really care about. And last but certainly not least, I've started to do more Slayer to earn a little bit of money. These fucking birds, though? Holy shit, they beat my ass. Can you guess that I didn't know what these birds did? I didn't know that you needed a goddamn fucking mirror shield. Yeah, I didn't bring that the first time. And I almost fully died because these birds stared at me and ruined my stats. They ruined my self-confidence. But one trip to the Slayer Master later and I was fully prepared to fuck these birds up. I then got a Hellhound task, which sucked, honestly, but I did it. And then finally, I got a decent money task, at least for me, which was blue dragons. I decided it was finally time to invest in a rune crossbow and kill these dragons with that. This weapon is so fucking cool to me. 
For me, this is one of the most iconic weapons in RuneScape, possibly because of Settled and Swampletics. Uh, but if I'm being honest, I still think it's really, really cool to have it. And it's, for me, a very iconic weapon. Also, fuck these little baby dragons. They got in my way. Even though they count for Slayer XP and Slayer credit, I didn't want to kill them. But they just kept walking up to me, ruining my fucking aggro. But, you know, whatever. Killed them, got them out of the way. And I eventually complete the task. And I sell all of what I collected, earning me around 530,000. Once again, bringing my cash to over 1 mil. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome back to my short, fast paced and shitty guides to quests. Starting from the top of the list, we are going to tackle the fishing competition. Damn, I'm so fucking clever. To start this, we need to talk to this dwarf over here named Vestry. He tells us that if we want to gain access to the shortcut through White Wolf Mountain, we're going to need to enter into the fishing competition on behalf of the dwarven people, because in his words, dwarves are shit fishermen. Seems like an odd detail, but I'm not going to question it. In order to ensure our victory, we are going to employ some less than honorable methods. We're going to cheat. It's cheating. That's what we're going to do. We're going to grab this red vine over here. I honestly prefer Twizzlers. And then we'll head over to the fishing arena. Good dog. Good dog. Ow. Ah, shit. Stop. We're going to place this garlic in this pipe right over here to make sure that I get this good fishing spot and the vampire doesn't. Isn't it daytime? How is this vampire alive right now? Or is he just like dressed up as a vampire? Whatever. He doesn't want that spot, so we get to take it. After literally half a second, we catch the fish and win the fishing competition, run back to Vestry, and that's quest complete. Simple enough. The second quest to take care of is Murder Mystery. The head of the Sinclair family was found killed last night, and it's going to be my job to figure out what happened. Shouldn't the guards deal with this? Whatever. We gather some evidence being a thread and a knife, and then we talk to Gossip. Again, that's this person's government name. It's capitalized and everything, and they tell us to go speak to the poison salesman and see if they have sold any of their wares to a member of the family. Now, this is the second time I've talked to this person, and I love that they are just setting up shop in a bar. It's not like in an alley or somewhere hidden, just a public space where they can sling poison to whoever wants it. Wonderful. The salesman tells us that Carol bought some of their poison, so we check in on that. Running back to the manor, we talk to Carol, the daughter of Lord Sinclair, and she tells us that she used the poison on a drain outside. Investigating that will show that she is as stinky as this drain and lied to us. At this point, the quest helper fully broke, and I couldn't really figure out what to do, so I did the unthinkable. I read the next steps, like I would have had to do way back in 07 if I had ever made it this far in the game. And as it turns out, I wasn't the only one who was stuck. This Iron Man right here was doing the quest at the same time as me and also was stuck. So I was able to help them out, which actually felt pretty good, honestly. I told them that the quest helper skipped a few steps, and with that information, they were able to progress through the quest just like me. After taking care of the next few steps, I did my best Horatio Kane impression and did some CSI work. I find some prints that match Carol's that were on this dagger, and I tell the guards to arrest her. Quest complete. Witch's House. I'm going to be very upfront with all of you right now. I don't like kids. I don't like helping kids. But since this is a requirement for Recipe for Disaster, here we are. This little shit lost his ball in the witch's backyard and wants us to get it back for him. Being that it's a kid we are helping, my brain fully checked out and I really don't remember what I did for most of this stuff. We get some cheese. Gotta get cheese. Gotta get more cheese. Yeah. I think we attach a magnet to a rat or something. I get to pretend to be Solid Snake right here. And then I kill E.T. and then a bunch of other weird looking monsters. I give him his ball back and that's another quest taken care of. Fuck you, kid. Next up is Gertrude's cat. This poor lady is having a rough time with her kids and an even worse time now that her cat has gone missing. 
Being the good Samaritan that we are, it is our job to find the cat and return it. We grab some catnip over here and cover this sardine to provide an enticing treat for this cat wherever it may be. Gertrude tells me that her kids over in Varrock Square might have an idea where the cat went since they were playing and the cat followed them. Great. Time to deal with more shitty kids. Hey kid. Oh. My fucking god. Hey, do you rent out space for advertising on that five head you got there? Holy shit. These little assholes extort me for some money in order to save their own pet. I swear to god, if I could take my dragon scimitar and beat the shit out of you two, I would. They tell me that the cat is going to be in the lumber yard northwest of Varrock. Why the why the fuck are you two playing in a lumber yard? That seems unnecessarily dangerous. Whatever. I run over there. I find the cat, but she won't come with me. As it turns out, the cat has had a baby, or at least I think that's what's happening. And we need to play a game of hide and seek to find this other cat. After finding them, we reunite the two cats and make our way back to Gertrude to finish the quest. And we even get our own little friend. That's so sick. What should I name you? Actually, how about you name them? Tell me in the comments what this cat's name should be. For now, I think I'm going to call you Warner Brothers Iron Giant. But don't worry, that's just temporary. Our next quests are going to be part of the same quest line. But since it's short, I decided to put both of them in here. Starting all the way back with Demon Slayer, it's time to continue that storyline with the Golem. Traveling into the desert, we come across a badly damaged Golem named Clay Golem. Beautiful. We repair this guy with some soft clay and we find out this golem was designed to fight off a great demon. We find a letter to someone in the dig site and grab this mechanism because the quest helper told me to. Traveling to the dig site, we find Alyssa, the person the letter was addressed to. She tells us that her late husband wrote that letter and if we are interested in reading his notes, they are going to be located in the exam center. Oh look, words. Anyway, the quest helper tells us to go back to the Varrock Museum. We talk to the curator, steal from him, and then take this golem statue from upstairs. We return that golem statue to the ruins. We place it just like this on this pedestal, facing it towards the door, and it opens just like that. Sick. We enter the portal and see an empty room with a skeletal demon body on the floor. We tell the clay golem the demon is dead and that he can relax because everything is A-OK. -okay. But he doesn't seem to believe us, so we reprogram him, and now all is good. That is, until we start the next quest, Shadow of the Storm. Father Reen here asks us if we still have the silver light, because apparently something real bad is going on. A dark wizard named Denath is preparing to bring forth a powerful demon named Agrith Nar. Agrith Nair? Who knows? So we head back to the ruins and see what is going on. Wow, this is just like that Disney movie. Darling, it's better now. Oh, that's not the right one. Fuck. I had to make my sword match my outfit real fast. We can't be clashing now, can we? Being that we are dressed in all black, we are clearly evil, just like this guy Dave assures his boss. These guys aren't the brightest, are they? I gather the materials from the evil members to create a demonic sigil so that we can perform some kind of ritual. You know, this all seems kind of excessive. Why can't I just ice this fucking wizard guy right here and now? That way there's no chance of him bringing a demon back. Anybody else? Anybody else think that? Maybe not. Anyway, we make the sigil, we grab some book from this well, and get set up for the ritual. Can I... Can I not be in the very center? I am the main character after all. I think I should be in the center. Fine. As it turns out, if you perform the ritual backwards, you open the portal rather than closing it. Oh, and I guess this Denath guy was Agrith Nar the whole time. I suppose somebody should have seen that coming. So what, did we just send him back home and now he's stronger than ever? Sick, I'm so glad that we did that. 
I feel great about what we've done here, guys. Good job. I told you, if you would have just let me ice this motherfucker, none of this would have happened. But nobody listens to me. I'm just doing quests here. I'm just the dumb adventurer. Oh shit, the portal's closing? We gotta go, guys. We gotta get the fuck out of here. Oh my fuck. That person just died in front of me. I, I'll i never be the same after this. Now it's time to assemble the Avengers. We got this guy. We got this guy. We got Evil Dave. Oh boy, I'm not feeling very confident about the group I've assembled. At least the golems here. That's kind of cool. We perform the ritual once again, but this time correctly. Agrithnar is summoned back to this plane. Oh my god, he just killed that man. No, not anymore. Fight me, you coward. I'm the one who summoned you. And now I shoot this demon in the face until it's time to get the last hit with the Silverlight. Getting the killing blow with the Silverlight transforms it into the Dark Light. Ooh, edgy. And we gain some strength EXP for our troubles. That's quest complete. Before we can become heroes, we need to save the wizard Merlin from a crystal. To begin, we start by talking to King Arthur himself, and he tells us that Merlin somehow trapped himself in a crystal in some cave, and they haven't had any luck breaking him out. So, as per usual, it's going to be my job to fix that. We talk to some of the other Knights of the Round Table, specifically Gawain and Lancelot, and they tell us that there was a wizard named Morgan Le Fay who may be responsible for trapping Merlin. I'm going to infiltrate his base and find answers that way. How am I going to infiltrate that base, you ask? Well, I'm going to stuff myself into this box right here and wait to be picked up by the crew of the ship headed to the base. Incredible. Wow, it's just me in this uh, dark void with nothing but my own thoughts, huh? What a terrifying idea that is. Luckily, that doesn't last very long, and I can stop fixating on the mistakes in my life that brought me to this point. Once on the dock for the base, I break out of the box and head upstairs to fight the evil Sir Mordred. Oh, this guy really isn't very scary, is he? That is, until THE Morgan Le Fay busts in and halts the killing blow. Now, looking back at the dialogue in the quest, I didn't really read it, it reveals that it was always known to my character that looked like a black candle, some bat bones, the legendary holy sword Excalibur, then perform some ritual to bind an evil spirit. Like, what did Merlin do? What did he do to piss you off so bad? Why were you so mad that you really fucked his shit by putting him in this crystal? Honestly, none of that really matters, so it's off to get the supplies. We get the candle by gathering the wax because apparently it's bad luck to make a black candle. I don't know. We talk to the Lady of the Lake because she has the sword, but before she gives it to us, we need to pass a test. Heading over to Port Serum, a ghost white man talks to us. Well, he would if I could see him in the world instead of just in the chat box, but you know, whatever. We give him some bread and oh wait, oh wow, it was the Lady of the Lake the whole time. We get the sword, we kill a bat over here, uncover the spell and perform the ritual and finally we bust Merlin out of his prison. Next on the agenda is Family Crest. This man, Diminithes, Diminithes, Dim wow, wants to repair his family's crest, but his three shit kids have the pieces, so we gotta go get them. First son is apparently a chef who wants to make a seafood salad. Sounds delicious. I'll take three. Here's all the ingredients, and that's a crest third we've got. The next son is in the Alcared Mines. I always wondered who the man was over here and now i know he wants some jewelry for his lady friend but not just any gold jewelry he wants stuff made out of perfect gold i have no idea what that is but we talk to this dwarf over here and he tells us where to find it we do some kind of puzzle and get the perfect gold and craft the perfect gold into a perfect ruby amulet and a perfect ruby ring oh my god there is a massacre happening in falador square Please, somebody help these people. Me? 
You want me to fucking- No! I'm far too busy. Don't you see what I'm- I'm smelting stuff over here. Also, do you see that guy's fucking armor? Are you crazy? Someone should deal with that, though. Anyway, we take the gold pieces back to the sun, and we get our second of the crest pieces. The last piece is probably the most dangerous to get. This hot mess of a man has been poisoned, so we treat him, and he tells us that he was trying to summon a demon of some kind, and it didn't go very well. Wait a minute, man. I've seen videos like this on the internet. You wanted to summon a hot lady demon, but it backfired, didn't you? You fucking idiot. Alright, so we head down into the wilderness, we kill this demon that he summoned, and we get the last crest piece. We Elmer's glue it all together, and voila, quest is done. Now we take on Shiloh Village. So, to be perfectly honest, I don't like Karamja. There's just something about this place that whenever I need to go here, I dread it. I don't like this area. But, since we do have to do it, let's just suck it up and roll on with it. We talk to Mosal over here, and he tells us that there is this terrible sickness happening in the village. I love how blissfully unaware my character is. Like, what's wrong? There's not like five zombies right behind you or anything like that. It's our job to lift this curse that is causing this illness, I think. Talking to Trufidus, he tells us to travel into some dark ass hole and find a bunch of different things. So we do exactly that. We have to examine this gallows over here and retrieve a body from it. After gathering the body, we can sense that the spirit of the body needs to be put to rest. So we travel all the way over to Tai Bo Wan Ai and bury him in the village. The spirit then thanks us and gives us the key to cleansing the entity uh, that cursed him to begin with. We have to search this rock over here for some more items, a delicate sphere and an ivory pommel for a sword. Using a chisel on that, we create the Amulet of the Dead. With the amulet equipped, we make our way over to where Nazastrul is resting. We beat that ass three times over and put their soul to rest as well. Apparently, the spirit was tricked by Zamorak and that's why everything went to shit. Remember kids, do not trust a god ever. Ever. It is now finally time to start Hero's Quest. I am decked out in my gear and I'm ready to fucking rumble. To begin this, we talk to... Oh my fucking god. Achilles? Achates. I... Boy, oh boy, man, I'm fucking illiterate, aren't I? Anyway, she gives us a list of items that we need to collect as our task. So it seems that the test for becoming a hero is simply to gather what these people tell me to. Alright, here we go. We need to talk to this gentleman over here in Port Serum so he can help us slather this gross-ass oil onto our rod. There's a joke there, but it's too easy. Come on. We head down to the Taverly dungeon, fish ourselves some eels, grab two just to be safe, and then I teleport out and cook these bad boys up on this range. Man, this episode's making me hungry. Talking about seafood, salads, and cooked eel. Could go for some, like, sushi. Maybe some poke. Huh? Oh, right. Back to the quest. We now need to get a Master Thief armband from the Phoenix Gang. Remember these people back from Shield of Erev? Yeah, me neither. But I need to steal some candlesticks from a guy named Scarface Pete. I head over to Brimhaven and talk to the waiter to get access to the cook, but not before I have my friend drop me a key. You see, this quest is another one where you need to have someone help you out. So I enlisted my friend to do just that. Using the key, I get into this side room over here while my friend lures this man Grip over and I can just take my shots at him without any risk of being caught. After Grip is dead, my friend is able to grab the candlestick and drop them for me. Perfect. Going all the way back to Varrock, we give Straven the candlestick and he gives us the Master Thief armband as a reward. Two items down, just one more to go. The last item I need to get is a fire feather. Oh, that's really cool. It seems like we're gonna be fighting like a phoenix or something. However, I do first need to get something called Ice Gloves, probably to hold this feather without burning our hands or something like that. We travel into White Wolf Mountain, follow the path along, and then we find the Ice Queen. My first strat, because there's a bunch of people around her, was to take out her guards one by one and kill her after they all died. But as it turns out, they kept respawning way faster than I could kill them. So I just said, fuck it, prayer up and shoot the queen. She drops her gloves and we head off to Entrana. 
Oh, okay. It looks like I'll need to take this Phoenix down with some magic. All right, cool. All right, looks like I'm all ready to go. And it's dead in one hit. Sick. Well, I got the feather and that's all that matters. With all three items acquired, it was time to return to the Heroes Guild and rightfully claim my title. This quest was kind of whatever, if I'm being completely honest. There was no big boss fight or really a fight of any kind, really. I mean, the biggest one would be the Ice Queen, but that was really simple. But it's done and we can begin our journey to becoming legends. Oh yeah, that's right. We are going to be starting legends quest just because the RFD wiki tells me to. Uh, so real fast, we need to talk to some guards over here. I speak to the Grand Vizier Urkel and we take on his challenge. And our first task is to map out a part of Karamja. <sighs> okay, well, hopefully it won't take me that long. And my charcoal fucking snap. God damn it. Okay, well, one trip to the GE later and we have a bunch more charcoal. I map out this whole area and then I even grab a little bit of tasty vanilla pods right over here uh, on the way out just for my trouble. And just like that, we are done with the Legends Quest section of RFD. We start our journey by helping this woman whose daughter has gone missing in the desert. We have to follow some footsteps into this desert and... Lady, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news here, but there's a bunch of wolves out there, so I'm going to guess that she probably got eaten. But I guess not, because we continue following these footsteps, and we come across an encampment with some mercenaries posted out front. I'm sure nothing bad is going on here. I taunt this man into fighting me. You fucking weakling, you can't take me on my worst day. Do none of these guards care that I just killed their captain? Guess not. I loot this key and then I put back on my desert clothes so I don't raise any suspicion and then I enter into this camp. I end up talking. of a weapon located in Captain Siad's office. We head on over and he just lets us do some recon work right in front of him. While the security here is honestly really lacking. You guys should probably fix that or not. You're slave owners, you're bad people. It looks like this guy is interested in sailing. Boy, oh boy, do I have some good news for you, my man. Sailing was just voted on recently and guess what? It's coming to the game. Oh, really? I can't wait to train that skill. I just think sailing is going to be such a great addition to the core game of RuneScape. While the captain is distracted, I open this chest and grab the blueprints. With those in hand, I return to Al-Shabim, and he asks us to create this new weapon. Oh, it's a dart. This must have been when they were introduced into the game, I guess. But my man, let me tell you, you're a little bit behind the times. Me too, but I guess here's your dart. We get the sweet pineapple and we return to the slave camp. Perfect. And yeah, I guess they just kind of let me in and out as I please. That's nuts. Like I said before, not a great security system, but once again, I'm not really going to try to improve the security system of slave owners. It's just not something I think is worth my time. We make our way back into the cave and we give the pineapple to this guard. He's now happy to let us into this deeper section of the mine. And now it's time for a prison break. We find the daughter, Anna, and we stuff her into a barrel. She's not very grateful, which is kind of annoying, but we help her out anyway. After getting her into the barrel, we're able to winch her out to safety. And with all of that taken care of, that's quest complete. 
Next up is the first quest in the troll storyline, Death Plateau. These soldiers over here are having trouble with the trolls wrecking their shit from above, so it's going to be up to me to try and find another way around. But before I can find the path, there's another larger issue at hand. Some dumbass guard lost access to the group's supply of weapons, and we need to try to figure out what the combination is so that they can access their weapons. We tried to talk to him, and he's a fucking mess. As it turns out, he's got this thing for drinking and gambling, so being the enabler that we are, so being the enabler that we are, I go and make him a drink that he fancies, a blurberry special. Making this thing is wild, by the way. I don't drink, so just seeing all the steps for some alcohol in a point and click adventure game is crazy to me. That's lots of attention to detail. I really like it. We get that done, we give this man some booze, and then we play a game of chance. Well, my luck is truly impeccable and there's no way I can look. fuck. Oh, but I guess he's hammered and he thinks he lost anyway, and he gives us an IOU. This fucking idiot wrote the IOU on a piece of paper that has the combination for the chest that we need. God damn it. We then need to talk to this guy who I think is being pinned down by the trolls. I really don't know. I wasn't paying too close of attention, but I made it in here no problem. And I, I don't know. Regardless, he tells us that we need to find a Sherpa, but he doesn't really know where the Sherpa is, according to him. That guy is literally 20 seconds away. He is a 20 second walk away. This man right here is useless. We talk to the Sherpa Tenzig and he tells us that he has the key to traversing the troll area. It's spiked boots. It's boots that have spikes in them. I'm sorry. Did no one think to ask the man who's been living in the mountains what the best way to get around these mountains is? Am I going crazy? Am I insane? We make the boots and do a quick test run. And as it turns out, this path right here is great for bypassing the trolls. We let the captain over here know, and that's quest complete. Oh, cool. We get claws. Nice. Continuing with the trolls, Denlith needs our help once more. It turns out there are some guards who have been captured by the trolls, so we need to get them out of there. It's time to infiltrate and liberate. Making our way farther into the mountain, we need to kill Dad. No, really, we have to kill Dad in order to progress the quest. All right, so he dies, and now we can continue our infiltration deeper in and fuck off, old man. You're going to blow my cover. Don't you see what's going on here? You pick the worst times to show up. Go away. We need to kill one of these generals for a key. And since these guards right down here seem to be asleep on the job, it is simple enough to pickpocket them and get these guys out of here and to safety. Mission complete. The last prerequisite for Desert Treasure is Temple of Ikov. This person, Lucian, needs a mercenary to retrieve the Staff of Armadil. So, being fully trusting of this shady person, we need to start on that right away. We first grab some boots over here, even though I don't think I really need them, but hey, new boots are cool. We are wearing my full graceful outfit because we need to weigh negative pounds over here because this bridge is real old and real shitty. I fix this lever over here and then I get to start a really bad game of Russian Roulette. I need to search these chests to find some ice arrows in order to kill this special monster that can only be attacked or only be damaged by ice arrows, like ice weaponry, I think. Eventually, I do get the 23 that I need and then I get the fuck out of there. Run over, I kill this guy, I get teleported by this witch who needed a shitload of limper roots for some reason, and then I find the base of the Guardians of Armadil. And I instantly switch sides because Lucian seems obviously evil, and then I go pull a cheeky little murder on them, but they bamf away and that's quest complete. Alright, it's finally time for the big boy, Desert Treasure. We take another carpet right over to the Badabin camp once more to find the archaeologist Asgarnia Smith. I don't know if you could hear that in my voice, but I did air quotes when I said archaeologist. He's just a glorified treasure hunter, and he asks me if I want to split the loot on a pretty nice treasure that is the literal thing of legends. No, really, the four diamonds that we need to find, the diamonds of Azandra, are said to be nothing more than mere legends. But there are those that believe in their existence. One such person is Terry Belando, uh, better known as the archaeologist expert over in the dig site. He helps us decipher these etchings given to us from Smith. And with that translation, we return to the Bedabin and start asking around for anyone who may know a thing about these diamonds. 
This bartender tells me that my kind isn't welcome here. Rude. I'm just a treasure hunter trying to steal potentially priceless artifacts that have been ingrained in this area's mythology for so long that everybody knows their names and is part of their culture and history. I'm just trying to take that for my own benefit. Like, that's such a bad thing. Regardless, we lie to these people and tell them that we're working on behalf of the Farrakh Museum. We manage to speak to Eblis, who gives us hope that these diamonds are the real deal, and he knows actually where one of them is located. Eblis creates a summoning circle with our help to conduct a spell that will give us the location of this first diamond, the smoke diamond. With the location acquired, I put on my finest armor, God, I look so sick. And I delve into the smoky well on the outskirts of Paul Nivnich. While in the dungeon, I need to light these pillars in a timely manner. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Perfect. That allows us access to this chest over here, which has a key in it. And then we face off against Farid. We take him down with relative ease. And that is one diamond acquired. The next diamond on our list is the Shadow Diamond. Talking to Rosolo just on the outskirts of Ardoin, we offer our help in retrieving an item that he wants back in exchange for a ring that will allow us to see the invisible. Being the near clairvoyant that we are, we know exactly where this item is located and taking the proper precautions, I stock up on poison resists, food and lockpicks and get to work cracking this safe in the bandit camp. Fuck. Shit. Ass. God. Damn it, how many locks does this thing have? How valuable is this pendant? Perfect, first try. Returning to Rosolo, we give him his pendant back and he gives us the ring. The door just so happens to be right behind where he was located, which is very convenient for us. The quest helper tells me to try and save spot Damis by luring a bat or something. But let me tell you, I was not ready for this dungeon. I find Damis, but I am under attack by two monsters already. And by sheer fucking luck, honestly, I get him into this safe spot. I was almost positive that I was going to die down here. But as it turns out, I'm the fucking best at this game. And that's another diamond we've got. Hell yeah. Next up, we have the blood diamond. All right, so I'm going to give you the TLDR of this uh, cutscene here real fast. Hello, my name is Malik. I'm a real piece of shit. I rule cannabis with Lord Draken, and I make these people's lives a living hell. Uh, Malik, sir, wh why are you collecting the tithe this time? Shut the fuck up, Rovar. I didn't ask you any questions, and you know not to ask them back. You, who the fuck are you? You don't look like you belong here. Um, me? I'm just an, I'm just an adventurer. I'm just looking for some diamonds. A diamond, you say? Well, I may have just the diamond in fact. Oh, can I, can I have it? No, first you must do something for me that involves great danger and will be a gigantic pain in your ass. Great. Well, just fucking tell me what it is. Uh, but we need his help since he knows where the diamond is. In fact, he has it on his person. And he will give it to us if we agree to kill someone named Desous. Desou? I don't know if it's like French pronunciation. Since we are really in need of that diamond, we agree to help out. Malik tells us to gather some materials that will allow us to kill Deso. Talking to this really cool looking NPC, Rontun, he helps us create a silver pot. Now we have to take this to Entrana and get it blessed. Hey man, can you bless this like fucking pot for me? But of course, it seems like a totally normal thing to ask. Thanks man. With the blessed pot, we take it back to Malik and create a nice little drink out of my own fucking blood and garlic powder. Mmm, sweet and garlicky with notes of iron. Delicious. We now gear up to fight Deso. This guy was a little bit scary, but not too bad. I know that what I'm doing to kill these people is not optimal, but I got the kill anyway and was rewarded with the next diamond. One more to go. The last diamond is the ice diamond. We make our way all the way back up to the troll stronghold and talk to this little troll kid here. His parents apparently stole the diamond and were frozen as a punishment. That's rough. Okay, so as to not let this kid be an orphan, we agree to help him out. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Fuck this place. Fuck this place. Fuck this place. You can call me Illidan Stormrange because I was not prepared. That joke fucking sucks. We kill five trolls to gain access to the other section 
and I make the smart choice of turning back and resetting my gear and stats. With mage gear and proper food and potions this time, I take on Camel. As it turns out, if anyone was wondering, the Ibans Blast is not a fire spell. So my question is, why does it use fire runes? No idea, but it took me a little bit too long to figure that out. Once I did though, it was smooth sailing to get the kill from that point. Moving past Camille, we traverse this nightmare bridge. Ow. Fuck, I keep falling, please. Someone help. And honestly, with zero trouble at all, I didn't fall on my face one time, I make it to the parents. Freeing them will reveal that this little fucking shit kid had the diamond the whole time. I mean, I guess good on him for keeping that close to his chest, but let's be honest here, I'm not above icing that little shit and looting his corpse. I'm not above it, I'll do it. But we have the last diamond and are close to completing this quest. We return to Eblis and he tells us to place each of the four diamonds on their respective altar at the pyramid over here. Now, it's time for the last gauntlet of the quest. We need to make our way to the top of the pyramid so that we can make our way all the way down to the bottom. There are four levels in this pyramid, and as you might have noticed, I forgot anti-poisons because I suck. I'm sure it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. This area is fucking rough, guys. Luckily, I only fell once during my entire run. I have no idea what the falling rate is in this zone, but I'm not going to question it. Navigating these mazes on the various levels, we get poisoned and... Now it's a race to the bottom to see what gives out first. Running past and praying to whatever may be listening, we make our way to the bottom just barely. Truly, I was one hit away from death by the end of this. We enter into the room and now are speaking with the Azandra. They have no idea how long it's been since they died and they think that the God Wars are still raging on outside. We assure them that they have long since passed and they eventually accept the truth. They thank us by giving us access to the ancient spellbook and a fat drop of magic XP. And that, my friends, is the last quest needed to complete Recipe for Disaster. We begin this quest by talking to the chef, as you might have guessed, and as it turns out, this guy is a total fraud. His ancestor was apparently such an amazing chef that the king at the time promised his entire lineage a job as the castle chef. That's a wild deal. Also, that chef must have been the absolute goat. I want to try whatever he was cooking. My character goes full fucking savage on this chef saying that he would have canned his sorry ass way back when and he should consider himself lucky that he still has a job. We feel sorry for the guy so we agree to help him make this special dinner that needs to be made every 10 years. I am so done with these NPCs being fucking useless as is my character but here we go. With the help of the quest guide I've already got all the ingredients needed. Hold on just a second. The special meal that was cooked is a dirty martini it looks like and a rotten tomato with an eye of newt is this a fucked up bloody mary what was the former king just like an alcoholic and loved this nasty ass drink i don't know we give the chef all the ingredients and boom that's quest complete i thought this was gonna be hard well, I think that's where we're going to end today's episode. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all later. Goodbye. No, I'm just kidding. We get to watch a cutscene now, hell yeah. Oh cool, it looks like everyone's here. Why is Evil Dave here, dude? Fuck that guy. Also, who is this ogre? Oh, this is, this is fucking chaos. Everyone is getting random events. Oh fuck. Oh shit. Everyone is dying. Oh, it's the it's the uh, fortune teller. Thanks for showing up. And now you've froze everybody. Cool. What do I have to do? Oh, I've got to chef up count them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight dishes to save each and every one of these council members. 
So what are we talking about? Like cooked fish, maybe a loaf of bread. Oh, they're going to want the most complicated and specific foods that I've ever heard of. And each one is going to take me around the world of Gilinor running around like a chicken with my fucking head cut off. Sick. What else did I expect? All right, let's get to it. My thinking going into this was to start with people that I didn't like to get them out of the way and work my way up. So let's start with these stupid goblin generals who I've only ever interacted with once and I truly had hoped would be the last time I did so. I gather the ingredients beforehand to minimize the time I spend running around on each of these quests. I'll be doing that for each part just as a heads up. Once everything is in my inventory, I head to the goblin chef and ask him for help. The chef agrees, but first I need to help him with a little experiment. Giving over the final ingredients, this motherfucker creates an explosion that shakes the earth. Also, these goblins above ground, totally cool with what just happened. They're like, oh, it's just the chef again. He's so funny. My man, what was that? Oh, fuck you. Fast food? That's so good. I hate that. With his little experiment taken care of, I need the chef's help to create the general's favorite dish. Now, the only problem is that these two generals can't agree on anything. If you remember back from Goblin Diplomacy, they couldn't agree on what color armor to make their troops, making this more challenging than it really needs to be. One of them wants a dish with fruit, but the other one will only eat oranges. OK, that's simple enough. Oh, but one of them doesn't like the color of orange. This line right here sums it up perfectly. So I need orange slices that aren't orange. I need maggots that aren't bland and I need bread that isn't crunchy. OK, well, I create this fucking nightmare that literally ugh, makes me gag. Oh, it's so disgusting. And we serve it up to the generals. Oh, God, and that's one down. Next is scratch uglugui, a glugui, a glogui, scratch a glogui, an ogre that I I can't remember if I've met at this point. I'm sure that I have, maybe, but I really don't remember him. But we've got to save him all the same. This big boy wants a big bird. Seems simple enough. We head over to the ogre lands and speak with Rance, the ogre that taught us how to catch chompies way back when. Speaking to them is fucking useless. But I get the idea that in order for them to help me, I need to do something for them first. Rance wants to go to Karamja for the drinks. He says glug lugs, so I think that's what he means. I've got no clue. Karamja is a real long walk, so I suggest that they make a boat. And honestly, I must not give a shit if this guy lives across the water because I just cut a little divot into this tree and call it a day. I need to give the ogres some motivation and reason to make it to the Karamjan shores. So it seems that they are all food motivated. Honestly, I get it. Same guys. So I use my knowledge to catch myself another chompy and then I head all the way over to the shores of Karamja, cook up this bird as a smoke and scent signal. Oh my God, they are they're just swimming. They are just swimming as the rudders. That's fucking incredible. It seemed like the creators really had a good time with this quest, and I love that. So now with the boating system in place, uh, Rance tells me that it's time to catch a jubbly. He teaches me how by inflating a toad and to use it like a fucking balloon. Didn't Shrek do this? After catching this massive fucking bird, holy shit, this thing is chonky. I cook it up and I serve it to scratch. That's another council member saved. Next up is Evil Dave. Fuck this little shithead, but he wants some soup and I've got to catch some evil rats for spices. But uh, Gert here doesn't really seem to be up to the task, so. Now we have Pirate Pete, another NPC that I don't remember. He wants fish cakes. I could go for some of those as well, honestly. Nice deep fried crab with some tartar sauce. It's time to go diving, I guess. And I'm using a fishbowl? Sure, I don't know what a bad idea is, so let's do it. Also, this captain seems to be grilling me like I'm committing a crime while asking for some crab. Anyway, let's head under. Oh, good. Another fucking ogre. I know how this goes. Tell me what you want before you give me access to the giant crab. You want some mud skipper tails? Sure. I just got to weigh myself down with these rocks over here so I can reach them and it's easy enough to get. Now, can I please get this crab meat? Cool, thank you. 
Teleporting back to the Lumbridge chef, he tells me that making these things is easy as cooking them on the range. Perfect. Three down, five to go. A dwarf, eh? I'm surprised it's actual food this man wants, if I'm being honest. I would have assumed that it's some sort of extravagant alcohol instead. But he wants something called a rock cake. But before we can talk to him, we need to be able to loosen his lips on that secret recipe. We head over to the bar in Falador and talk to Kaylee so we can get the secret sauce, so to speak, for Rohawk, who is the father of the frozen dwarf. Bribing Kaylee with a few hundred GP, she gives up that Rohawk loves a drink that combines gold pieces and Asgarnian ale, turning it into Asgoldian ale. Now that I know the secret, we can go talk to Rohawk, but he won't tell us the recipe. Hey man, you look thirsty. Here's a drink. How about another? Another. Another. Hey, Rohawk, you remember that time you told me that you would uh, show me how to make a rock cake? Yeah, you remember that? You should uh, you should do that. Like, why don't you do that like right now? Like now, now, like right fucking now. Being absolutely annihilated on the ale we gave him, he makes us the cake with all the ingredients that we give him. We cool it down with our ice gloves and that's another dish prepared. And we are officially halfway done with this quest. It's time for the monkey. It might come as a surprise, but this one took me the longest, because the monkeys in this game are made of pure evil and spite. We disguise ourselves and speak with the king back on Apatol, and I simply ask what his favorite dish is. Harmless information, right? Well, the king doesn't think so, and he tells us that he doesn't want that kind of sensitive information falling into the wrong hands. What does he think is going to happen? Someone's going to make him his favorite dish, and he's not going to be able to turn it down, and then they poisoned it? Oh. Oh wait, that's actually that's actually kind of smart. Maybe this monkey is onto something. Well, we need that info whether or not he's going to give it to us. And the king assures us that the three monkeys in the temple are definitely not going to tell us what his favorite dish is. So we immediately go and talk to them. But I actually lied because before that, we do need to get some gorilla bones. Take this. And now we get back on track. Oh, it's the three wise monkeys. That's a cool little reference we got here. They begin to talk to me about the different ingredients that I will need to make the king's favorite dish, a big stuffed snake with banana and monkey nut paste. Like a fucked up peanut butter and banana sandwich. Well, it just so happens that I do have a banana on me. Will this work? No, I guess the king is too good for a regular old banana and he demands a red one. Okay then. Well, I guess I will try to see if the regular monkey nuts are good enough. Oh, wait, just another pit stop for bones. Just a second. And who would have guessed that the regular monkey nuts are also not good enough? Well, it is time to go get these better ingredients, I suppose. First stop is the meat of this abomination, the large snake. I kill a few of these just in case I burn them in the final moments of the quest. I then create the necessary grigris, and I am now one with the monkeys. As a gorilla, I pull down this tree and I grab the coveted red banana. I then turn into a ninja and complete their agility course, but not before I grab some special monkey nuts along the way. I slice the banana, I crush the nuts, and I stuff this snake. So the last thing to do is cook it in the fires of hell. I mean, on this stone slab that is above some lava. Please don't burn, please don't burn, please don't burn. Yes! A perfectly cooked stuffed snake. Disgusting. But the king loves it and we can move on to the next member. We're now starting to get into the people that I don't mind in the game. We take on Ceramic Face, who wants something called a Creme Brulee Supreme. Is that like a Chalupa Supreme, where the only difference is they add sour cream? Am I making a Creme Brulee with sour cream? No. No, I'm not. Of course not. With most of the ingredients available from the chest in the basement of Lumbridge, I just need to get an egg from an evil chicken and something from a black dragon. Both the chicken and the dragon go down with relative ease. After that has been taken care of, we grind some sweet corn and get all the ingredients mixed together and use our wish from the dragon fairy. This seems like a gigantic waste to breathe fire on this creme brulee. That's another one taken care of. Now time for the friendliest man in all of RuneScape, the Lumbridge Guide. This man wants a cake of guidance. And oh, all of these ingredients are just cake ingredients. Perfect. What's the catch? Oh, the catch is I need to play who wants to be a millionaire in order to save the universe. Sick. No pressure or anything. Luckily, Quest Helper's got my back. 
I did try to see if I knew any of the answers without the quest helper, and let's say I knew some. Not all, but some, so I'll take that as an absolute win. With all of the ingredients enchanted, we can make the cake, and we apparently put it into a question mark cake tin and serve it to the guy. He loves it. All right, now that Gert has finally had a chance to grow up, it is time to take on the last member of the council, Dave. He wants some kind of evil spicy soup, but he can't remember the correct amount of each of the spices. He only knows what it tastes like. So this is a classic trial and error puzzle. All right, so in order to get the spices, I need to get Gert to kill some rats. Some hell rats, specifically. Go, Gert! You have no idea how long I've waited to make that joke. You better fucking laugh. My method was pretty simple. We just go one by one on each of the spices until we get the right amount for each. So, for example, I would get a spice, put one dose in, and then have him taste it. If he says that's not the right amount, then I would put two doses of the same spice in to the next one, until he gave me the dialogue that told me that I had enough of that spice. Even though I don't like Dave, I do have to say this puzzle was pretty fun. After I have him taste and 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 taste, we finally get the correct soup made. If anyone was wondering, my recipe was two yellow, three brown, one orange, and one red. Perfect. I definitely don't need to have Dave check this since I know that it's the right soup. So I head on over to the dining room and fuck God. Fine, fine, Dave. Here, taste this soup. Let me know if it's right. I know it is. I'm going to have to recatch all of these fucking rats. Oh, no, I don't. Thank God. He doesn't drink all of it. Oh, bless be. Thanks, Sarah Doman. And with that, we have now freed all of the council members. There's just one more thing to do. And that's get 36 more quest points because I need 175 to fight the Kul... Kul oh, I'm never going to get this word right. Kulineromancer. Fast forward like eight hours and we did it. Yay. All right, everyone. The time has finally come. I'm going to get these Barrow's gloves. Here's the setup for the first fight. Agrith Nana, a banana demon. While we are in the Kalaneromancer's arena, we're not able to use any prayer or anything like that, so it is purely just gear and food uh, in my inventory. So I have to make sure that before I go into each one, I am prepped as best I can because I want to make sure I take these down as quickly as possible. There's not much special about this fight, so I put on my best range setup and got to work. Oh, this thing looks awful, but we take it down with pretty much no issue. Next is Flambide, a reskin of Farid from Desert Treasure. I make sure to equip my ice gloves because if I don't have them equipped, he will quickly make me drop whatever weapon I'm holding, and I take this man on using magic. I looked at the wiki and it told me to try mage with snares and to be using water spells, so that's exactly what I did. But uh, I think my snare might have worked a little too well because he kind of just got stuck over there. Honestly, that's an easy dub for me, so we'll take it. Caramel is next, and she is a clone of Camel from Desert Treasure. So the same principles apply for fighting her. I need to stay close, and I need to use fire spells. This time, I brought some restores because she can and will drain your stats during the fight. There we go. Another one bites the dust. I call this setup my Barrow's Chic. But Dessert is the so from Desert Treasure. These are all just previous bosses from quests, by the way. Uh, and he is very weak to magic, so I don't need a ton of magic bonus to hit him, and I'm better off using tank gear to minimize the amount of melee damage I'll be taking. This fight did get pretty close at one point, but with sharks and karambwans, I'm able to heal very quickly and kill him faster than any of the other bosses so far. The Gelatinoth Mother is the fight that took me the longest to prep for. I really wanted to make sure that I could get each of these bosses down in one try, so I kept going back and forth for what gear I wanted to take in, and I settled on this. It may look weird, but trust the process. The mother is weak to magic and range, and will constantly change colors, only allowing tacks of that same type to damage her in that phase. I learned that last time from fighting the Dagonoth mother that I need to be better about recognizing that switch. And I am choosing to pretty much ignore the melee phase entirely when she turns orange because her melee defense is crazy high. 
Oh, I got a max staff bash hit. Let's go. This fight is probably my favorite of the bunch because there's stuff that I have to pay attention to rather than just my HP. But she goes down just like the rest of them. And now there's only one left. The man himself, the whole reason why I'm in this mess, I once again put on my best range gear and dive deep into the fray. And honestly, he was no match for me. We did it. Recipe for disaster is complete. And now it's time for my reward. Hell yeah, that feels so good. That's so cool. Oh, that is a big check mark off of the gear setup for the fight caves. I need money. This is both for me, the person, and my character, but let's focus on the game right now. I need a lot of money in order to get some of this gear. I could attempt to get a drop or something like that, but with my current gear and the timetable that I've set for myself, that isn't very feasible. So I need to make as much money as I can as fast as I can. There's going to be a few different methods and tests to see what works best for me personally. We start where I think everyone would have guessed, and that's Barrows. I do a bunch of runs and I get myself an Aram's Hood. That's cool. Why couldn't you have been the robes or the pant, like the, the, the cloak or something? If that were the robes or the pants, I would have pretty much been done. But I guess I can't complain too much. A drop is a drop. But my luck at Barrows didn't really seem to improve much as I'm still going dry for the most part and my kills aren't the fastest. So this method started to take a toll on my mental. That's when I decided to take a break and work on some Slayer. With some of the consistent money makers out there, I thought this was a pretty good idea to go for. I also unlocked Bigger and Batter and I was hoping for some decent payouts with that. And that's pretty much what I got. I did get to fight two of the bigger and badder Bloodvelds, and I was truly appalled by what they looked like. Oh my fucking god, who made this thing? I hate it. I hate it. After getting Bloodvelds and Black Demons mostly, I chose to swap once again, and this time I did some clue scrolls. I know that these aren't the best in terms of making GP, but I like doing them, and that's where this sentence ends. From the first one, I didn't get much good, but I did manage to get a nice little black beret worth around 23,000, so I'll take that to the bank every single day. Looking through my inventory, I knew it was time that I needed to sell as much as I could. So going through, I clear out most of my herbs, my seeds, some gear, just to clear some room, but also to make me some money. Around 1.6 mil, which is pretty good. And as it turns out, that is just enough to buy me my god dehyde armor. I chose to go with Gothics because it is the cheapest, simple enough. And when I tell you how many times I check to make sure that all these gear have the same exact stats, tons. I did it so many times. I was so paranoid. I know that the wiki is full of great information and I'm not doubting it, but I'm doubting my own capability to read. And that's let me down on more than one occasion. But being like 85% sure I go ahead and buy myself the full gear minus the bracers because I got those nice Barrows gloves earlier. With the new gear taken care of, I still need around three or so mil GP to get myself a blowpipe. That's probably the most important piece of gear that I can get at this point. Wanting to do anything but Barrows, I look up online and see what bosses I'm able to kill. The list is pretty short as you might expect, but it boils down to the Giant Mole, Seracnus, Barrows, King Black Dragon, and the Dagonoth Kings. As I said before, I'm tired of Barrows, so that one's going to be a no-go for right now. The Dagonoth Kings are apparently a super big pain in the ass to get to, and the King Black Dragon is in the wilderness, and with this new gear that I just bought, I'm not going to risk that. So I'm left with the Giant Mole and Seracnus. Depending on the amount of kills I can get per hour with both of these, they can be pretty profitable. The only problem is my gear. The recommended gear for both of these bosses is a little outside of what I have currently. For the mole, it's recommended to use full Darox 
and pray melee while at 1 HP to blast this dude into the fucking sun. As you may know, my Barrow's luck hasn't seemed fit to give me any pieces of Darox, let alone a full set. My kills aren't going to be breaking any kinds of records anytime soon. So instead I put on my strongest gear, being the new Guthix gear, and I head over to Thalador Park. I search these holes to find an empty one, and the hunt is on. Okay, cool. We got the fur and we got the claws. That wasn't very hard, which is cool, but that's also not a ton of money. And yes, as you may have seen, I do not have the Falador Hard Diary done. And that's a huge part of what makes this fight as profitable as it can be. After this kill, I was leaning away from the giant mole to begin with, and then a guy in full Darox comes into my hole. Jesus Christ. And nearly one shots the mole that I was working on, stealing all the credit. So yeah, let's move on. Next, we're going to try to take on the spider. Seracnus is weakest to crush, so I invest in a dragon mace and head on over there. I went into this fight with as little information as I could. I was told that it swaps from range to melee, so I need to pray accordingly to that. And then it has adds. Other than that, I went in blind. For my first run, my footage fully broke, but this little reenactment will show just how well it went. Bad. It went very poorly. I died very quickly. But I did learn that when it says hiss, that I need to pray range. So, information was gained. Okay, round two. This time, my attempt was pretty solid if I do say so myself. I was able to get to the ad phase and chose to ignore them and focus on the boss. I think that was a mistake in hindsight, but we live and we learn. I end up dying again, but I feel like I'm getting a little closer here. Never mind, I lied. The next two runs go pretty poorly, so I decide to shake things up. I noticed that one of the adds was shooting what looked like a magic attack, and since I'm in full plate, I just kept getting hit over and over and over again. So, it's time for Guthix to come to the rescue once again. I also decide to extend my kill time by taking out the adds entirely, because at this point, I'd rather get a kill than another death. But unfortunately, I still do get another death because I... I think I turned my prayer off or something. I don't exactly know what happens here, but it wasn't pretty regardless. Before going into this bossing section, my friend suggested that maybe I could try Zolra and get my own blowpipe as a drop that way. But let me tell you, after fighting these much easier bosses, there's no way in hell that I'd be taking that on right now. Maybe in the future, but for right now, this spider is in my way. With some determination and luck, I am finally able to take her down and I get... Eight potatoes. So barrows anyone? With one last idea for a boss, I make my way to the farming guild and kill myself a Hispori. This thing looks so fucking cool. I know this boss won't give me a huge payout, but I thought I might as well put it in this section because I'm covering all the bossing I've done so far and it seemed to fit. It goes down with relative ease and I get myself mm, a nice 1200 GP. Yeah, that's not really gonna cut it. Back to barrows I go. I looked into completing the Mauritania Hard Diary, but um, getting 70 Prayer, 50 Construction, and 71 Agility, that's not really something I could commit to right now. So we just have to go in there like we always do, kill the brothers over and over and over again. They really don't want to give up their items for me, but I'm getting consistent runes, which I suppose works. To put it into perspective how badly I didn't want to do barrows for this video, I gathered fucking king worms for like two hours and I made like 300k, which is respectable. I was scrounging out here trying to find any sort of money making method that I could reasonably do. After both a few hours of worms and barrows, I finally hit 3 mil cash and I buy myself a fang. Because at the time of recording, it was cheaper to buy myself a fang rather than a pipe. And with the level being achieved with boosting through a pot,